yeah we're back that's right what up my beat sorcerers you are tuned in to the 20 podcast and i'm your host dj spider we're back guys been a minute since i've recorded a podcast i know i left you with some new episodes but i have been gone for a month i went on a crazy trip all over europe I was with my family, my son uh, was out there playing and winning soccer tournaments in Spain, which was incredible. I ended up DJing in Madrid, shout to Boromi. Um, I ended up playing in Paris. I ended up DJing in London. I had such a good time. I got to connect with so many dope DJs from all over the world, make connections for the future. And uh, I'll tell some of the stories on here in future episodes. But uh, it was just, you know, so great to see how DJing can connect us all over the world. Make sure you reach out to all your DJ homies because you never know what kind of crazy trip you could put together. So thank you to everyone that I connected with and uh, that, you know, gave me comments about the podcast. Love it. Uh, As always, this show is brought to you by BeatSource, the music streaming service for DJs that play everything. And this podcast is available on all platforms. Uh, You could be watching us on YouTube. You could be listening on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you get it. So uh, tune in. And BeatSource, of course, has is constantly growing, constantly improving. We've got all this music streaming for you. You can use the offline locker cloud service if you're worried about the Wi-Fi. We can put a thousand songs in there. We got expertly curated playlists by some of the most amazing curators. I met one of them in London in person. Uh, I've met him before, but D James killing it on the African Afro beats tip. Uh, incredible. So go on there, beatsource.com for a free 30 day trial. Use our code, the 20 to bump it up to a 60 day trial. And let me know what you think. Um, also make sure you rate and review this podcast. Give us a comment on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. Do something nice for us on Apple. We appreciate it. And we can keep growing. We are back for you every week. We got so many good guests booked. So so tune in. And today is one of those great guests. I think you guys are going to get a lot out of this episode. Today we have a person of many talents, uh, many personas, many aliases. Um, and this person helps DJs in many ways, you know, from their equipment stuff to giving them dope music to play. And you will understand when I... Say who it is. Uh, For the past five years, he has done marketing and a whole bunch more at Pioneer DJ. Um, Just does incredible things over there, which you'll learn about on this show. He has two music projects, one called Roy LaCroix and one called Driver 405. One's like a house music, feel good, dope, bass heavy project. One is like a... um, you know, vapor wave, uh, you know, synth based project, really dope. We we discussed it on the show. Uh, He also has been on the reality show, Holy Moly, Steph Curry's show about mini golf. Uh, We we get into all of it. He's a super smart and creative dude that I am happy I got to speak with and get to know better. We go down some, you know, deep rabbit holes of DJ equipment, learning tips and tricks, things that I did not know about everything from the CDJ 3000s, stuff stuff on the mixers. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, We get into some hard facts on sound quality between the S9 and the 900. I know there's been some crazy Twitter debates, so uh, we hear from the man himself uh, on what he thinks, and you guys can fight all you want on Twitter after that. You can use these clips. Uh, But we hear about that, all the mixers, you know, the future, what they have in store, what they have right now. Um, So I'm so excited for you guys to hear this episode. Please make some noise and welcome to the show, Ryan Roth. Here it is the 20 podcast, Beat Source. We're back in effect. We've been gone for a little bit, but uh, we're coming back strong because on today's episode, we have got Ryan Roth from Pioneer, a.k.a. Roy LaCroix, a.k.a. Driver 405, a.k.a. Holy Moly Golf Champion, a.k.a. We're going to find out so much more. So give it up, everybody. Here we go. Yo, thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Yes. Really appreciate it. Yes. Finally made it happen. Uh, Last I saw you, I was about to head to Europe for some crazy trip and uh, and now I'm back and I'm, I'm happy you were making this happen. How are you? 
I'm great. Uh, cool. I turned 30 in a few days. What? So that's cool. Oh my God. I remember I turned 30 like 40 years ago and, uh, <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> I'm 78 now and, uh, 78. You look good for 78. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, getting up there. Yeah. Um, oh, that's amazing. Happy birthday. What's your actual birthday? August 6th. So August this Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So good we took one. a little, uh, trip last weekend up to, to Pismo. And okay. we did the dune buggies. Nice. Uh, you know, that was aggressive, but really fun. Did you yeah. flip the car? Did anything crazy happen? No, but you know, <laughs> you're so low to the ground that yeah. you reach that, like, you know, you could, it could be one foot drop or yeah. 80 foot drop. Right. You know, so we, we actually, well, we did get stuck and we had right. to have somebody pull us out. That's like part of the deal though, right? Yeah. That happens. Okay. It was traumatic, but <laughs> we, we pulled through. Oh my God. Were you driving? I was. Okay. I, I don't was. think I've ever done that, to be honest. I recommend it. Yeah. I recommend it. The safety video was like, you know, it was like such Prepare a Prepare to die. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, don't do these 30 things and you'll be fine. Right. That was like jet skiing. I took my son jet skiing in Catalina and like my wife wanted to absolutely kill me. Like oh. she like came with us to like the barge thing that we go off on and she was like, like paid the guy to like use binoculars. Bin I can't even say the word binoculars uh, to stare at us like way out in the ocean and be yeah. like, slow down. I'm like, I'm not trying to kill our son. Like I'm just trying to have a good time on the jet ski. But we came back and she's like, you will never do that again. I will murder you. Like, it's the right. motherly instinct. Yes. So uh, yeah, but dune buggy sounds really good. And Pismo's what, like three, four hours from LA? Yeah, it was about a three hour drive. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Dope. Yeah, it's nice up there. They have like golf and all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. Like, well, they, there's a lot of like outdoor, like hiking activities and whatnot, kayaking. Right. Um, nice. We actually went up to Morro Bay okay. first. There's like a really right. cool spot up there. And then we drove down to, to the Oceano Dunes. Dope. Um, so risked our lives. You know, risked your lives risk for that. Lives. You know, yeah. you're st and you're back. You're going to make it to 30 after all <laughs> yeah, that. I, <laughs> <am>. <laughs> 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 I can't believe it. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited, man. That's crazy. Nice. Well, good birthday. My brother's birthday's is uh, the seventh and my wife's in there. My dad, I got a lot of August birthdays in my life. So good people are Leo born in season, August. Man. Yeah, exactly. Leo season. Um, dope. You doing any DJ show? I mean, I know you, you're an artist, you're a DJ, you're a marketing person at Pioneer. People will learn about all this. You're an amazing guy golfer um are you doing any birthday shows or anything like that i am um so i actually am playing uh well we're doing like a little beach party on saturday just oh, with cool. some homies nice and so we're bringing the decks out and that'll be fun Dope. but two next tuesday night i'm playing in hermosa beach uh, okay. at a little place called tower 12 okay and tower 12 is kind of like known for their Tuesday night, Trop Tuesday right. sort of vibe. And so oh, cool. I'll bring out house music and there's not a whole lot of house music in Hermosa beach, but right. that's like one of the main places to go yeah. and it'll be really fun. Um, I'm playing with my uh, friend Kyle Zuck, who I actually okay. released a track with nice. uh, on Holy Moly records and we have the exact same birthday, which is kind of crazy. Oh, wow. So we just like, so it's perfect. Do birthday things together now. It's yeah. great. <laughs> and wait, Holy Moly Records, that have anything to do with the golf thing? No, oddly oh. enough, completely different, like unrelated. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Completely unrelated from the TV show that I was on. <laughs> just hilarious. That's nuts. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that. But I guess first off, um, for people to get to know you, you know, that don't, um, your Ryan Roth uh, persona or your real name. Um, My human name. <laughs> your human name. Yeah. Um, is, you know, your work at Pioneer. So, um, you know, what is your role at Pioneer exactly? I'll let you describe it so I don't say the wrong thing. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I've been at Pioneer for just over five years now. Okay. Uh, technically, my official title is marketing and, or well, North American brand marketing and artist relations strategist. Okay. Which sounds very fancy. Sounds very fancy, um, yes. Essentially, we... Uh, you know, just come up with creative ideas to, uh, help sell our products. Right. Uh, and, um, develop relationships with, with artists, right. Uh, okay. in the community, um, you know, in, in North America yeah. that, you know, are, are helping, uh, inspiring and entertaining other people. And, you know, basically that's, that's kind of the goal. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And I mean, you showed me, uh, you started telling me a bit about the story about how you got the job and showed me the business card that you were handing out at NAM uh, with your face on it and straight laced picture. Uh, oh, yeah. Accountant my, picture on there. In my previous <laughs> life. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, you can bust it out and show the camera if you want. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know if you want to give out your personal info, actually. Oh, you know what, though? I think we should. Uh, <laughs> 
the way um, you show the, the photo of what I used to look like yeah. before, before I had a beard. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and then tell us the story about how you got the job. But yeah, you can cover some of your <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, my, my address or whatever. Um, so, so anyway, uh, this is what I used to look like um, back <laughs> when I worked in the finance finance industry. That's uh, incredible. So I actually, so I went to university of Missouri, graduated as a finance major. Okay. Um, and that's where you're from. Like you grew up in St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. That's my hometown. All right. Um, so, you know, shout out all the St. Louis homies. Yeah. And, St. Uh, Louis homies. Shout St. out Louis to Nelly. Shout out to Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like best friends. You I'm know? sure. You know, <laughs> it's hot in here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well, you know, that was definitely a big inspiration for me, um, growing up for sure. Right. Well, uh, I mean, he's one of the biggest music uh, people, you know, oh out of gosh, St. Louis, yeah. right? Nelly, Chingy, Murphy Lee. Yeah. St. And J.E., actually one of my really good friends, yep. J.E., uh, yep. he's amazing. And I've gotten to go to his house out there in St. Louis and just his basement is like, uh, like heaven. Like it's like the craziest place yeah. you'll ever be for gear and music production. And he's just, you know, one of the most low key, coolest dudes ever. Um, and St. Louis is dope. I used to randomly just go DJ casinos out there. Oh, um, um, Ameristar? Did you ever play Ameristar? Ameristar. And wasn't there Harrah's or something? I used to do Maybe. Kansas City, Missouri, and St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, um, yeah. And I would do Harrah's, Kansas City, like every month randomly. They would fly me out there to DJ in some massive venue and yeah. just play open format. Mash. It was like the mashup days, probably like 2006, 2007. Oh, like with Girl Talk, White Panda? Kind of, yeah. yeah. It was just like us and like, you know, they wanted anybody to it was kind of like an AM DJ AM type of DJ, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. if they couldn't afford him, you know, and bring us in there. And, um, yeah, that was my experience just getting barbecue out there. And, and Barbecue's then eventually fire. I met J E and I would, I would do video DJing. So, and J E did too. So I met him through that kind of world and became friends. Yeah. So, you know, I, I definitely, um, you know, I, I started in the, in the St. Louis music scene. Okay. Um, I mean, I started like making, like producing like happy hardcore music. Oh. Dude. And no one really liked it. I, I grew up day. here going to raves and loving like Ron D. Core. I don't know if you know him. I don't think I know that one. Yo, that was like, he played crazy hardcore sets. And then there was all this Rotterdam music and happy hardcore music that was like, you know, when I was young going to Insomniac when it was first starting, like yeah. we would just listen to the crazy shit ever. It was like 190 BPM. And just like, doosh, 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 you know, like slamming your face into a subwoofer type shit. Well, it was just so funny because like coming from St. Louis, Missouri, you know, like we just were talking about everyone was super into hip hop. Yeah. And uh, although I was, I really got into like, you know, happy hardcore and like Venga boys and like yeah. 80s synth pop and all this like kind of crazy music that no one was really right. listening to at yeah. the time. So in high school, people probably thought I was just this like weird left field kid, you know, like, right? Like bl blasting happy hardcore music in my Jeep Cherokee, yeah. you know, and uh, and then you know I, I just I never stopped doing that, so right. I just kept going. Um, it's good to be the weird yeah. kid. Yeah, you, I think <laughs> it it's, pays I, off in the long run. It can. Yes, it can. I think being yourself is what uh, gets people pretty far in all these businesses, you know, and especially in music and stuff like when people finally settle into being their genuine self and what they really love is when I feel like all the people that are attracted to that, you know, come yeah, to them. Right. I agree. Yeah. That's cool. So, so you came up in Missouri, you were into all the crazy music and uh, you ended up going to college there and then you came out to Nam just to kind of like check it out cause you were DJing or producing or why were you at Nam? Right. So it's kind of funny. I mean, I went to college with the goal of being like in venture capital. You know, okay. I wanted to be an investment analyst. I thought startups were super cool. Right. Um, and I wanted to crunch numbers, I yeah. guess is what I thought I wanted. Right. And so what I noticed was kind of on my downtime, I was always like looking up like mix mag, you know, YouTube videos, like hour long house sets. And, yeah. um, you know, I was, I was looking up like DJ tech tools, like what's the, what's the hottest gear coming out this year. Right. And, I, I just, I noticed that that was such a important part of my life that I couldn't really ignore it any longer. Yeah. And so I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to throw a little bit of money together. Uh, grab my buddy Dev and we got on a plane to, to go out to Anaheim. Oh wow. Split a hotel. And I made these business cards that I just showed you guys, right. um, with my face on them with literally the goal to like just meet people in the music industry out here in LA. Yeah. Um, because I knew that that's where it was happening. You right. Know, like it, it, St. Louis is amazing. You know, I mean, all the, all the connections and friends that I have yeah. there, I still talk to, you know, all, all the time. Um, but I, I knew that, that 
the working world out here was where I wanted to be in. And, right. and so, um, I, I just, you know, was going around handing out business cards and, and, uh, I really connected with the, the guys at Pioneer. Uh, and I was like, you know, this would be a really cool, really, really cool company to work for. And, yeah. and it was, um, it was Hector who's, who's our uh, senior marketing manager at the time Okay, that, uh, kind of gave me a shot and he's like, Hey, yeah, uh, I get sent over your resume, you know, our marketing guy actually just left. And, and I was like, sounds great. That's amazing. <laughs> so I bothered what timing him too. That's so perfect. perfect timing. And so I bothered him like every single like week, like, you know, Hey, by the way, like check out that resume yet. And right. I was just super persistent. Um, and he'll say to this day, like the reason that he remembered me specifically, because you meet so many people at NAMM. Of you course. Know, oh my God. Yeah. Was because of the stupid picture I put on my business card. That's amazing. <laughs> See, it, paid, it so, paid off. Yeah. But, but, you know, I'll, I'll say like for a lot of people out there, I'm sure who are looking for a career change and looking to switch from like, you know, finance into a more creative field or something. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I do think that, that it's, it's very possible to do so, you know, it's, right. it's you, I was doing a lot of like, uh, stuff on the side. Like I was working with startups. Uh, yeah. I was working with uh, Disco Donnie Presents oh, in St. Cool. Louis, yeah. doing artist relations stuff with them um, and, and B&W Productions in St. Louis. And they're amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I realized that, uh, you know, my life is moving out here to LA. So yeah, it worked out. Incredible. Yeah. It was described to me that you had balls of steel and just came up to them and said, <laughs> sup, I want to work here. <laughs> I was like, damn. All right. I mean, I can't confirm so, or deny, but you know, right. <laughs> I think, well, the lesson is have the confidence, be persistent. Don't be annoying. Being quirky will not hurt you, you yeah. know, and being different and standing out and being yourself, you know, I think is what it comes down to, you know, so they probably figured this dude, maybe he's a little weird or whatever you're saying, you know, it's yeah. a picture on the thing, but we remember him and let's give him a shot. And yeah, obviously it worked out. You're there five years later, you're doing mm -hmm. so many cool projects with them. And, uh, seems like you're constantly growing, coming up with new ideas and they're letting you, uh, put them into action, you know, and yep. you made it through the whole pandemic with them, which probably was extremely challenging, you know, just from the standpoint of not being able to people not even DJing, you know, or using products or being yeah. out there or anything. So, uh, I'm sure that was crazy. That was a challenge for sure. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, pioneer DJ and a lot of the music industry, I mean, we really rely on experiential activations and right. touch and try and like live events for right. people to really come up and like actually use our gear, Yeah, you know? So like, for example, I mean, I, before, you know, coming out here and, and before even buying a DJ controller, I would yeah. practice on DJ equipment at guitar center before <laughs> wow. a gig, you know, right. I would go up and plug it all in. And, you know, I was the one like re unplugging all their stuff and they're like, what are you doing? And then after a while they're like, Oh, it's just that guy again. It's just, you know, at the time I was DJ skis. They're like, Oh, it's just skis. You know, he's, he's back plugging. DJ our stuff. skis in yeah. the house. <laughs> in the oh, house. that's amazing. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, you know, I think that, uh, people should just go and do a live stream from on Twitch from guitar center or something. You're like, that's a great idea. I'm here. Yeah. That'd be amazing. That is a great idea. People are like, I don't know the equipment, bro. It's like, Hey, just roll in the guitar center. You got Open it. decks at guitar yeah. center, man. That'd be hilarious. That would be really funny. But, but yeah, I mean, during the pandemic pioneer was kind of like, we had to be agile, you know, right. what are we going to do, right. uh, marketing wise that will really, um, a give back to the community mm -hmm. because that was the most important thing is being, um, uh, these artists that, that don't have, um, gigs and, and, and yeah. they don't have, uh, the, and their livelihood has kind of been snatched away from right. them. Uh, how, how can we give back to the community, but also how can we, um, you know, help promote our products still mm -hmm. in, uh, in non-traditional ways. And so we came up with this, uh, idea, uh, called DJs and PJs, which, you know, we, we started a Twitch account yeah. and, uh, like so many people did. Right. Uh, and we, you know, started bringing in artists that, uh, we felt were really, um, uh, innovating and inspiring and, and kind of, uh, using our gear to, to really new and, and creative ways. Right. And they would wear pajamas and I would wear a Hugh Hefner robe and <laughs> they would say, uh, you know, uh, they would tell their story and they'd play, uh, I think like a 45 minute set or something. And That's so cool. it was really fun. I mean, you know, it got a lot of attention and a lot of people were happy. Uh, but also we just started doing more digital marketing too. Right. So it was a way in a, in a way, a, a good thing for pioneer to get into the streaming and digital marketing and that kind of world that yeah. maybe wouldn't have happened as quickly before. Yeah. It was a fast track. I mean, even, you know, at, yeah. at, at Twitch, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they, they were just shocked with, with how, oh, yeah. how impressive the, uh, engagement was, you know, on, on DJing and, right. 
and it just really like ramped it up a lot faster than yeah. I ever thought it would. So totally, a lot of the gamers are like, "What the hell? You guys are invading our world over here!" Right, you know? <laughs> right. But I think it was a good, you know, a good way. And it's and then it's a good way for people to still see your products, see how they're used. And I remember bringing on new things to stream, and people be asking about, "Oh, how does this work or that work or what are you using?" You know, and it's very interactive. You know, it's like annoying when you're DJing and that there's always that one guy that will come up to you like, what are you using, bro? Oh, I got that at home. I'm a DJ too. You know? And you're like, I don't want to talk about this right now. Yeah. But on the internet, it's like, fine. You know, they're in the chat, like asking you and you're like, oh yeah, I just push this button and you loop roll it and it's cool. You know? And it's oh, like, totally. All the nerds come out on, yeah. on Twitch, you know, they're all, they're all out to, they come out to play, you know? Exactly. <laughs> so it's like made for that, you know, it's yep. just kind of a more fun thing. And and you're more relaxed and you're in your house and you're not having to like deal with a manager screaming at you for playing the wrong song while the other guy wants to know if you're using Serato or record box or something, you know? So. It's yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, and I think that that was the whole point of it too, was like uh, breaking down the fourth wall so that yeah. people could actually talk to the DJ yeah. when before it was and just to kind pioneer of like, in a way, which seems so people are always like, who has the hookup at pioneer or, you know, the plug, or how do I talk to anybody? And it, almost like you guys were able to be talked to, you know, through a chat or your, or, you know, the shows and stuff like that, which is kind of yeah, cool. Absolutely. And, and I think what's, what's so interesting, I mean, not just about pioneer, but about so many brands, uh, is that Twitch and social media in general, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, you, you see pioneer DJ and you see this logo and, and, right. and there's people behind that logo yeah. and, and that's what Twitch was able to help do a little bit more is, is say like, well, um, you can talk to our product specialists, you know, uh, pulse, you know, Jay, um, you know, my, myself while, yeah. while hosting, you can ask questions to the DJs while we're, um, doing these live streams. Right. And, uh, a lot of people would say, Hey, I've got some suggestions for DJ equipment and I've got some ideas on how to improve your products. And we're open to that all the time. Yeah. You know, we're like, yo, send them our way. Let's, 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 let's right. hear it. You know? Yeah, I know. Pioneer does listen to DJs as much as some other DJs are like, who thought of this or what's that? You know, like the hater kind of people. But in reality, they have you guys in mind and all of it is just to make things easier and better. You know what I mean? It's and a if, fine balancing act between yeah. uh, keeping that familiar traditional feel of Pioneer equipment, right. but also pushing the envelope uh, and coming up with new crazy ideas sometimes, right. you know, and yeah. And, and five years from now, you know, uh, well, I'll give you one example, you know, the RMX 1000, you know, a lot more people I'm seeing are using that right. piece of gear and I'm sure that. And what is that? Ago. That's the thing with the little knob, uh, in the middle and then you can yeah, add all the, the effector box. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. But I feel like, you know, five, 10 years ago, not a whole lot of people were really using it and now right. it's sort of making a resurgence. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I think keeping in mind, keeping it familiar and friendly for DJs, but also. We want to keep up with technology too, because right. you know, I mean, with with music production and and uh, the sounds of the decades, it's it's really also relies on what technology is available for you. Yeah, and I think ha you guys being DJs yourself and artists yourself helps so much because mm -hmm. you understand all sides of it. You know what I mean? You're you DJ a lot of different gigs and have a certain style of DJing. I I know I talked to Drew over there and he. It knows so many, so much about all styles of DJing and turntablism and is so kind of forward thinking and very micro going into the, you know, details of things. Oh, and he is a genius. Oh my God. Drew is a mad scientist. He's man. like I, I, beyond, I love Drew, you know, yeah. yeah, like straight, uh, doc, you know, from, uh, back to the future. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I mean, well, well, Drew is such a great work ethic too. I mean, he's, you know, oh and there's God. a lot of, a lot of our Amazing. team is just, you know, behind the scenes, like working after hours, you know, grinding, like you know, uh, he's soldering stuff. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's in, it's insane. It's almost like overload. I'm like, you need to explain this to me about five times and then give me a video. I can rewatch like 42 <laughs> times later because I'm not sure I understand all this, you yep. know, like I'll hit him two weeks later. Like I finally grasp what you were showing me, you know? Oh yeah. Um, but he's I think a tinker, ha man. He's yeah. A tinker. Yeah. He's amazing. And like having people like that on the team and you and everybody and, and even Lars, you know, like everybody mm -hmm. has their own DJ experience and different, um, niche and whatever they bring to the table, I think, to add into the, the ideas and to then filter the ideas from the outside into it. Right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, I think it's so important that, um, you know, you're really in, uh, deep with the culture too. And so, so many of right. us like, you know, going out to nightclubs and totally and, and checking out the music scene locally and internationally. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's just so important for, to get that perspective, to understand like what DJs actually truly need. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, um, 
So what, I mean, just, so I, you know, I wrote a bunch of pioneer questions that I thought would be interesting sure. just for the listeners out there and stuff. Um, and one other thing just to say before we move on is, you know, we'll talk about your reality TV show uh, career, but also I was like, do you need to be on a reality show to work at Pioneer? Because wasn't Lars also on a reality show? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he on The Real World? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? You, I know. There's you're, there's a trend. I yeah. Feel like. Some a trend. kind of trend going on. Um, so, yeah, if you want to work at Pioneer, just, just go, go, go on a reality, on reality show, first. you know. And um, now you guys are in Twitch, so it all comes full circle. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, I, Lars, Lars, uh, he was on The Real World. Right, he was that's the what DJ. it was. He was DJ Lars on The Real World. Yep. Amazing. And I would love to go back and watch those episodes, I mean, but, uh, you know, I think he's, I'm sure he's got them somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they have to be somewhere. We got to find some clips. Or, or maybe something. VHS, actually. Yeah. It's, it was back, I think, in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, you're making him sound old, but I think you're right. <laughs> no, he's, no, I definitely watched it. Uh, I got to have him on and I'll bring up some clips or something from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then, um, the, the, the reality TV of, uh, the, the show that I was on yeah. was, was called Holy Moly. Right. Which is like my son introduced me to the show and it's like his fit, one of his favorite shows. I told him when he was going to sleep last night, I'm like, I'm interviewing this guy that was on Holy Moly. He's like, what? He's like, you got to ask him. He was like, give me all these questions. And yep. you know, he was so excited. Because during the pandemic, you know, we, he loves mini golf. He's a little kid and he loves Steph Curry. And we were, we were like, this is the best show ever, you know? So, and, and he loves like Wipeout and like the whole combination of all of it was so good. Yeah. So. I mean, it's literally Wipeout meets giant mini golf. What the hell? So did you win? I didn't see your episode. I may have seen your episode, but I didn't know who you were at the time. So maybe I didn't put it together. Right. We so, watched a lot of it. Well, so just a full disclosure, spoiler alert, um, you know, I, I didn't win the two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Okay, uh, but I, I I gave it a good run. Okay, I gave it a good run. I'm sure, you did. And you know, I, I I've been playing golf all my life. You know, my grandpa Grandpa Jerry got me into golf, and, okay. and he makes a cameo on the on the show. Oh, really? Yeah, he flew out here for it. What? Um, That's great. Yep. And you know, I went and played golf uh, at Clayton High School. Okay. Um, back in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. You know, one day I was just sitting in bed watching. Uh, you know, on Hulu, scrolling through all the yeah. random shows on Hulu, and I found this Holy Moly show, and I literally binged the whole thing, like, front to back. <laughs> the first uh, season or something? Yeah, and okay. so that same day, I um, went online and saw if they were, like, casting. I was just like, you know what? I, I could do that. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. And then I just submitted my my email online just, like, for, for further information. Right. And uh, one day, I was, I was just chilling at the... Um, <clears throat> chilling at the pioneer office and I was just checking my junk mail and it said like last chance apply now, uh, for a chance to be on Holy Moly. Oh my God. And I was like, Oh no. So that night I applied, uh, for, <laughs> oh no. for Holy Moly, like literally like got in right before the cutoff. Wow. And, uh, somebody calls me like the next day and they're like, Ryan, M I Z. And I'm like, Z O U. Like what is it? Cause that's our, <laughs> that's the Mizzou, like, oh, kinda, right. uh, uh, I guess, um, slogan, right? Yeah. And I was like, who is this? And they're like, oh, it's, uh, it's Cassidy from Holy Moly. Um, you know, I went to your college and, you know, I went to Mizzou. And so we had that to kind of oh, kick it off with. Perfect. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the whole interview process was amazing. And, yeah. uh, yeah, being on the show was just, was, was unbelievable. I mean, it was like oh my God. such a cool experience and, uh, everyone that like I, I met on the show was really into golf and right. super different and, and unique in their own way and yeah. very fun. And so, yeah. Yeah. They have a lot of like crazy people on there, you know, yeah. and I was like, do these people really play golf or what's going on? You know, but, uh, most did. Okay. Yeah. It's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean the, um, yeah, I was like, I mean, what was like the hardest thing on the show? I know jumping through that like we windmill thing looks pretty hard. It also looks freezing wherever they film it. It's always at night and mm -hmm. there's like fog coming out of people's mouth, but then they show it in the summer. So you're like, what is going on? Oh, they it's shot my segment. Well, it was a few days. Uh, I was up there for a few days, but they, they shot my segment, I think at three in the morning on, on one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like. I'm like, what's going on here? It looks so late and it looks freezing. It was, it was super cold and it was <laughs> late. And I'd say the hardest part about it was just like, you don't really realize how, I don't know, some of these, some of these giant structures, like they actually kind of hurt. <laughs> like I got, it looks like it hurts and yeah. it looks like it's freezing. <laughs> They're like smashing them. I jumped it. through this windmill and I just get like decked in the leg. Yeah. It like looked a bruise like bruise and oh yeah, my God. but people getting like thrown into the water. I fortunately did not get oh thrown God. into the water, I but was like, I would not. They're, would they're it. like, you know, they get out and they're like, Oh, I'm so cold. <laughs> yeah. Right. Crazy. 
Um, well, that was, I'm glad you, you made it through and I survived. Uh, yeah. I survived. It was nerve wracking, but, um, I, do you have any good clips of them? Like talking shit about you? I know Rob, that oh, guy yeah. was always saying like the funniest shit ever with the two announcers. Well, I, I, I love, I love how <laughs> you can use um, it on one of your songs or something. I honestly should. You should like in the drop, like I'm sure he says something funny about you. Well, Joe Tessitore, um, I think he says, well, I, I had to give them some of my like like slogans and my favorite foods, and I had to give them all sorts of like right. fun things about okay. me. And so I had a slogan for a while, um, courtesy of my friend Ward uh, back in back in St. Louis. Yeah, uh, you only YOLO once, <laughs> which is like you know it's right. And so so Joe Tessitore is like uh, DJ Roy Lacroix's um, his slogan is uh, you only YOLO once. A uh, bit repetitive, but let's see how he fares here. Oh my God! And, and they use your one. DJ name, so you got to use you got to record some of I that. Know. And, like use it. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then uh, Rob Riggle one time he said, uh, I think on the windmill one he was like, I'd love to see this DJ's mustache just go flying off. <laughs> so there's a lot of good, a lot of good stuff in it's there. Amazing, he's so funny on there. I love watching it. That's so cool. Well, I'm sorry you didn't win, but uh, glad glad you did it. It's also, the journey. You just have to try out for these shows. I was on some show when I was a kid, like I was in seventh grade, you know, watching. One of those, it was on like local LA TV. It was called Fun House. It was like Double Dare, but oh. it was just only in LA. It was like on Channel 5, KTLA. And I remember same thing watching like, what if I just try out for the show? And like, you had to like write a physical letter, you know? Mm. So I'm like, I'm yeah. going to write the letter. And I ended up getting on and like, you know, doing the whole thing. So you got to send me a clip. It's, it's, I can't find the tape. If I could find it was it's on a VHS tape like you're saying. And the crazy thing is my partner was Maggie Gyllenhaal who became this massive, you know, actress. And I'm wow. like, if I could only find this goddamn tape, this would be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> because it's me and her doing the whole thing. We win the whole show. We do the whole fun house like I'm answering questions like completely lying. You know, they're asking me about my life and I'm just making shit up because I'm like so nervous oh, i was like 10 or 11 years old and they're like asking me shit like you know what's your favorite sport in in pe and i'm like i don't play sports you know so i don't even know what to say and so the other kids like baseball and they're like what's your favorite position he's like shortstop and they like look at me and they're like what's your favorite sport i'm like baseball they're like what's your favorite position i'm like shortstop like i remember just like, saying that guy thing. just said that too my parents were like you've never played baseball or shortstop i'm like i didn't know what to say like i'm on the spot here i'm just trying to win i'm like i won all the challenges that's all that matters yeah, you, know? you don't want to be like the the nerd who's like uh, I, I was don't like, play I sports. don't know. Yeah. Uh, chess club. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, little that I know would give Maggie Gyllenhaal her, uh, you know, path into stardom and, uh, <laughs> she'd become <laughs> huge. If I could find this tape, I'd be like, here you go guys, this proves, but yeah, I had it forever. And then one day the tape just disappeared. Maybe she came in my house and just burned it. So nobody would see it. Or That's something, a hell of but. a conspiracy right there, <laughs> but I'll subscribe to it. It's I the mean, Gyllenhaal it's, conspiracy. You the know? Gyllenhaal conspiracy. <laughs> I could see that getting like 4 million views on YouTube. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. It's like, going down. Someone's going to cut this and uh, yeah. it's going to be on TikTok. Her and Jake just came in and just killed the tape. Yeah. Right. <laughs> It was pre, I've like searched. I'm like, where is this shit? But yeah. I can see the thumbnail right now. It'd be like the Illuminati triangle. Yeah. It'd be like zoom in. You and like Maggie Gyllenhaal. And yeah. Like, yeah. like the law and order sound behind it. Like, right. you know. So yes, you can get on reality shows, guys. Just uh, try out for it. It's, it's attainable. And just keep doing it. I mean, I've, I've applied to like maybe three or four since then. And I've, really? I've gotten, uh, I can't name names, but I've definitely gotten pretty far in the interview okay. process. Nice. Uh, so what would it's you want to be on, like your favorite one, like Amazing Race or Big Brother or Survivor or any of those? Oh, man. That's a really good question. Um, definitely another game show. Okay. Definitely yeah, I another couldn't game do show. like Survivor. I may be Amazing Race, but I don't think Maybe I like could Family do. Maybe like Family Feud. Family Feud would That'd be, be really super fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Steve Harvey is just like, I mean, yes. he is one of the funniest guys. He's hilarious. Just his facial expressions. I would just definitely try to get him to make one of those facial you know the like deadpan like what you you know, just, yeah like, you just say something a little inappropriate you'll be like but he'll be like <laughs> but <laughs> yeah yeah and he'll just make that face yeah yeah family feud would be a good one i don't know if i could do the super surviving shows you know where you have to like no no raw pigs and stuff like the old joe rogan fear factor i couldn't do oh that oh my god that was nuts i used to watch that but like that was disgusting i think that's where my I fear of cockroaches that. came from oh totally yeah like, seriously yeah, no, gross. Where they had to eat those Madagascar ones. Oh, it's horrifying. Yeah. Disgusting. 
And my fear <laughs> of heights, actually, now that I think about it. All fear factor. I would not do well on that Same. Show. I was like, I'm not doing that crane thing. I don't care if there's a no. <laughs> cable holding me up. No way. Um, crazy. All right. Well, um, as far as some more of the pioneer stuff, um, what are, you know, you're a DJ, you're a producer. Like, what are some of your favorite and most used products that you like to use and tell people about? Yeah. Um, well, right now, um, I would have to plug the CDJ 3000. I mean, definitely my favorites. I, I request them everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Love using them. Just, I, I learn more and more about them. Like They're really a considerable time. upgrade from the 2000 Nexus 2s Huge. as well. And I think yeah. that um, once more and more DJs get their hands on them, yeah. they'll they'll realize that. And I think the biggest thing for me is the new uh, MPU in there is is what, what happens What's that? is- What do you mean? Uh, well, the new processor in the actual oh, okay. 3000. Because it's way faster? Yeah, you load a song that has eight hot cues, right. and it's instant. Right. Versus the 2000 Nexus 2s, you would load a song and you have to wait for each hot cue to load. Oh. This one's just like, boom, song loaded. It's right. ready to go. Yeah. So that's probably one of the one of like the best features that yeah. I Yeah, like. and for an open format DJ, the search function is pretty dope. You yep. know, like that's been a big thing holding DJs back of like, oh well, I don't want to just, you know, do a set on the USB stick because I can't search or I'm in a club and they want something. But now if you have your whole library on there, you can pretty easily just search for the track and put it on. And yep. then it'll kind of list them out in that cool way where it'll highlight the key of the song or you can mm -hmm. um, adjust, you know, sort of um, how you do in Serato or record box, click the um, organization by BPM, by key, by name or whatever. So yeah. And what I like to do is I like to go to the track section. So I like to go into browse on the CJ yeah. track and then I like to set a, tr uh, a filter. Okay. So if I'm like playing open format or something, or, you know, most of the time I'll be playing a house music set. Right. Um, I can sort by BPM and then also by related keys. Yeah. And then I can on all, on my all track section, hit track filter. And then all those songs will be in key and somewhere between three or four BPM from where uh, my current track is. So how do you do that exactly? Like you organize it by BPM. Can you do two of them or you just do one? Like you do by BPM. So yeah, you can only do, um, well, you can, you'll do a single sort. Um, but, but what you do is you go to the, f either a playlist or, um, all your tracks. Yeah. So you go into tracks and then you would, um, click on the, uh, the track filter button on the right. top, right. Okay. And then you'd set your, your filter, uh, parameters. Oh, so, so it's like this between these BPMs or yep. these keys or something like Plus that. Plus or minus three BPM of 125 oh. and then also related key like 7A and then anything sort of related to 7A wow. and then go. And then it'll just automatically switch from like, let's say you have 2000 songs to like 200 songs. Oh, that's and then you, crazy. All those songs will work well. That's if you're like, I don't really know what to play next, you know, or, or just practice. Right. Or you or just, whatever. sometimes it's nice to have the limitations and not have so many options when you oh, have yeah. so many songs you're scrolling through and you're like, Oh, the song's ending. I don't know what to do. So mm -hmm. that way it gives you a nice, um, sort of folder or whatever, like grouping of tracks that will go together, but you can still use your creative mind to like put them in a cool way. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great. Oh, and it's dope. I need to try that. I I've never done the filter things. So. Yeah. There's a bunch of like little, little tricks in there that I feel like, um, you know, uh, doing a deep dive into the CDJ 3000, like yeah. you'll, you'll find that there's a lot of things in there that'll really like help out your workflow. What are some other ones, um, like that, or, mm. or, or maybe you also mentioned before we started that you had, uh, taught vice DJ vice, you know, yeah. some of the stuff and that he had a bunch of questions. Like what were some of the things that he was, you know, amazed about or anything like that? Yeah. We got really, uh, vice is, vice is awesome, man. Yeah. He's and the so best. He, he came with, he came prepared with a list of uh, questions about record box and, um, we really, really dove deep in onto it. Uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that maybe not a lot of people really understand is um, how to uh, how to set uh, alphanumeric keys or regular keys on, mm -hmm. on your USB uh, or also on the CDJ. Right. And so I, that's in the record box settings. Know. Okay. Where you can like use the Camelot uh, keys. Right. Like seven A, eight yeah. A type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so that's something that you can actually do within record box, which is really cool. And then your stick okay. will have it. Um, Another really cool thing that I showed Vice was uh, the tags. So a lot of DJs will put like, um, you know, if uh, in their comment section. Right, like if a song is an original sample of a 
De La Soul song or something, yeah. but that's the original sample. You can write like this, and then and then if you search the song, they'll both come up or something like that. Yeah, it, well, so um, in the comments section, like what a lot of DJs do uh, is they'll put like you know um, v- vocal comma uh, trumpet comma you know violin, and then like oh, you can okay. sort by like by that. But with a right, CDJ, right? If you want to do a set of like trumpet songs or yeah, horn songs, hundred percent. Okay, or that, if you're putting together cool. like some some sort of routine, yeah, um, it helps. But we have a tag list now that uh, you can go into my tag, and mm-hmm. you can actually like write your own like things. So you don't have to use the comment section. Um, you could actually go into the CDJ and sort by all songs that have. Um, I don't know. You could make like gritty, all gritty songs that have a vocal um that are also moon baton you know and then you could sort by wow that and so there's a bunch of like really cool filtering and sorting things you can do um that oh, i feel I like is into advantage that of. that's crazy yeah yeah that's amazing because yeah i've been i've done it you know did this gig for i don't know like nbc universal and they they were like we're bringing in three horn players to play with you we want you to have all songs with horns on it that they can play along to. And I was like, mm. oh my God, like it took me forever to get all this stuff together. And then I was tagging them horns, but then it would just be nice to be able to have that pre done. You know, the more I, the more specialized things I get hired for that I'm like, okay, now I got to have this kind of thing or this kind of thing. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it just, I think it helps so much with organization, but also, um, I feel like you just got to spend like a whole weekend just prepping, you know? know, get in there, get into your record box library yeah. and just dive in and get all your metadata looking pretty. Right. And, then, um, and what about like, I saw a track actually, I was on Twitter last night and he was like, there must be a better way to sync up your Serato and record box. Um, but all the time rather than just like, Hey, I'm going to, transfer my Serato onto a stick, but then it's one time. But I think the way he was saying is that he likes to do both and he wants to have both constantly updated. And I wrote back like, you know, I've been using this thing called Lexicon, which is really dope. And to me, that seems like it's somewhat complex, but once you get it, it's okay. But it seems like the best way to keep them constantly updated. Um, And that's what I used. And when I was in Vegas last week, I made a whole stick, you know, to be ready Mm -hmm. in case my Serato died in Mm -hmm. the 110 degree heat. Um, And I used Lexicon to do that. Um, And then I watched the video that Mojax posted about DJCU, which was another one I forgot. Are those kind of like a record buddy? Lexicon is the same as record buddy it's like the updated version of record buddy okay i think um I'm sorry if i'm wrong record buddy people but record buddy doesn't exist anymore and i think lexicon right. is like this insanely more advanced program that can do the craziest shit ever like you it can do you know on spotify you'll pick a song and do the radio of that song yep it can do that before your library like it'll Um, or it'll find songs that'll mix together from your library and then it'll take your library import it allow you to export it into record box or vice versa or to any other libraries and um it finds duplicates and it's just super advanced like it's like insane there's still not even very many tutorial videos on it it'll save your cue points and everything too like everything yeah like like so i you know i did i imported my entire serato dj library into lexicon it goes pretty quickly and then and you have to keep updating it but i did it right before the gig and then instead of doing the whole thing onto my record box i didn't have enough room and i only wanted to do about 10 uh, playlist. So I wanted to do like a few of my histories from different sets that I thought would be good for this gig. Mm -hmm. And then a few crates I made that were like specifically for this gig. And yeah, I put them in, in the exact perfect order, the playlist with the, um, cue points and all the stuff. So I was able to just pop it in, boom, link them up and, and do my thing and feel pretty much just as comfortable as the thing and use the search function because I have 10 different crates on there. So if I just search, oh shit, where's that scratch thing I want to scratch? I just search for bit scratch or whatever I have and then I can just pop that up too. Oh, nice. I should I should get this. This It's is, amazing. Really cool. I'll show you. I mean, Drew obviously is the person that put me onto oh, it and he understands a lot about it. Um, but I've, you know, been messing with it more and more and more and it's like really powerful. It can also mess up your library. So you have to be really careful and make sure you're back. Oh up. no. Yeah. Well, cause I think it, it, it gets confusing. You know what I mean? You, you gotta like really know what you're doing. Um, and yeah. I couldn't find any tutorial videos on YouTube about it. You know, usually there's like something, but I think it's too new or something. There's another software called Beatunes. 
Okay. B E A tunes. Okay. Um, and that's what I was using for a while to like organize my iTunes library. Cause I actually still use, um, iTunes to oh, sort interesting. Or, okay. or Apple music to, to sort right. all of my, all of my tracks just cause okay. I've been doing it for like, you know, 12 years and I'm yeah. just like, I don't really feel like changing, but right. But, but yeah. a lot of people are now putting their, uh, their, all their music on Dropbox and we, cause we have this new cloud, uh, feature right. where you can actually access from your phone. You yeah. can actually access, um, your, your tracks through Crazy. this, you know, record box. So what's cloud. up with that? Cause I know like, obviously we have beat source and it's wonderful. We use yeah, it and that's cloud based service. And you know, that is accessible in record box in, um, Serato mm -hmm. and in some hardware players. I yeah. don't think it's in the pioneer player yet. Um, or something, right? Co correct. Now what we, we do have is, um, we just added something called uh record box cloud connect. Okay. And so, uh, or it was for the CDJ. Right. And so, um, so how does that work? Well, you have, so you'll plug it in with an ethernet cable. Uh, to the actual internet, you'll hard connect it. Okay. And there's because they don't have Wi-Fi in them. I'm correct. sure one day they will, but <laughs> correct. Well, hopefully, I mean, I mean, I don't crazy. Know. I'm guessing, but yeah, yeah. Um, so if if uh, if if you plug it in, you can access your record box library from the CDJ, and you can okay. actually download songs to play. Interesting um, on the CDJ without a laptop. So wow. I think that for the future of of um you know of DJing I think that we're really starting to see streaming especially with you guys right uh, beat source link beat port link yeah. um you know and uh and the record box cloud uh ecosystem that we're developing everything right. that's kind of like you know been been released and whatnot and and, and I think streaming is something that that people need to be looking out for and and really yeah diving into because it's right. really cool yeah I think people are worried about the connection thing and all that stuff I mean mm -hmm. I guess with the CDJ you're hardwired so you're better off than like a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. Um, I know people still are worried about all that stuff, but yeah, um, I think so. I mean, there's definitely some like, well, you can download the track to play back later. Oh, you can. Yeah. So just like in beat source, we have the locker. You could save up to a thousand tracks offline, which I think still to this day, a lot of people don't understand. Cause they're like, I don't trust Wi-Fi enough. I'm like, you can have a they're thousand songs. I mean, are you really playing a thousand songs? <laughs> like, I think you're good. You know, yeah. you have a thousand songs also mixed with your normal library. Cause a lot of times people too also don't realize that it's just another tool to utilize with your library. You can still have a USB stick. You can still have a computer running Serato or record box or any of the things with your whole library. Right. And then as well as have the streaming there with you, you know, and people are like, well, I'm not going to do just that, but I'm like, you can have both, you know, which is kind of a cool. Well, one thing I've actually been meaning to, to ask you guys yeah. is, um, can you export, uh, so let's say you download, you know, a uh, hundred tracks right. off of Beatport link, yeah. uh, to your, to your locker. Can you actually export those hundred tracks onto a USB stick? Um, don't quote me. I don't think so, okay. <laughs> but, um, maybe, and I don't know what they're working on. Yeah. I'm just the podcast guy. So people always DMing me. I don't <laughs> understand all the programming and the searching, but, um, I don't think so. Okay. I don't know if that's a legal issue. I don't know if that's a technical issue. I don't know if that's on the way or what it is, but I know that the offline thing is on the computer right? and is probably maybe on the players that have it. I'm not even sure about that. Um, but I don't think you can export it to the USB stick. But the more we talk about all this stuff, I do think that would be so useful. The technology is there. Right. You know what I mean? For because sure. Because they could maybe create, I don't know how, look, I'm not a programmer, but like create a locker on the USB stick. You know what I mean? The same way where you're not going to be able to steal those songs. The record label doesn't have to worry about it. Encrypted. Yeah, encrypted. It can still show the plays and, st and show the plays to the record labels or the services that track the plays. Mm -hmm. And you could have a 200 thing locker on the USB stick. I don't know how all that works, you know, but, but that would be so dope. That'd be cool. You know, that'd be really, really cool. Then it would be, you'd be more prone to subscribe to these services too, because you're like, Oh shit, I have access to all this stuff. Cause the cool thing about beat source also is that we have edits of all the stuff. And I think people are also slow to realize that, that like, like Oh, I'm using title or I'm using SoundCloud, but they're not going to have the, edit with the drum break in the beginning or the acapella out or the transition or all the things. And it's not, it's made, our thing is like made by DJs for DJs. And so we know have these, we have these like 
we know what you're going to need within the playlists and all that stuff, which is why I think it's cool. And the other one, you're just digging through sort of more consumer based retail listening, you know, type of things. So, right. I think what you guys do really well also is the playlists. I know that you have exactly. a VIP playlist yeah. up on BeatSource, right? Yeah. Yeah. Super curated, like really tight. I mean, all the tracks are going to work well. Yeah. yeah. And, and you get to see sort of like an insight into like what I do, you know, at things mm -hmm. and then what Vice does and then what spin all does and like you know we got d james out in london who's just like the biggest you know probably afro beats or at least white guy afro beats dj you know like out there and like he's so knowledgeable it's insane and you know yeah. like um everybody that does each playlist is very knowledgeable and brings a lot to the table so yeah and then to be able to utilize that in the kind of world that we're moving to with the USB sticks and all that would be like really cool, you know? Yeah. A lot of really good ideas. And also, I mean, uh, I'm sure like with you guys, yeah. you know, Pi pioneer DJ is always like super open to ideas or anything you yeah. have or anything anyone on your team has or right. any of the listeners out there. I mean, just comment in the, in yeah. the YouTube section below and just say, Hey, could you guys do this? Could you guys do that? We'll read that and we'll, yeah, we'll be take constructive. it into account. Don't we'll, be a hater guys. Come on. Yeah. Don't be a hater. <laughs> no be, troll, no troll comments. Yeah. Or you know what? We'll just, I mean, do whatever. it, but do whatever. Yeah. you're probably gonna have a better reaction if you're doing constructive criticism. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then just you suck or something, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's dope. So any other like tips you think for open format DJs or things they could use like on your stuff? I mean, you already gave us like a lot of gold, amazing mm, things, but there's, there's a really cool, um, new meter that we have on the CDJ 3000. Okay. Called the waveform meter. So, uh, prior, uh, to the, the like the older CDJs, you guys might remember like those little blocks, like four blocks. Okay. And your beat matching. Yeah. Um, and of course, every DJ knows how to just use their ears. You don't need, you know, yeah, visual but, stuff. But right. if, if you want visual, of course, it's up there. And so there are the four blocks uh, on the old ones. And then we upgraded to the, the phase meter, which was the lines on the beat grid. Right. And that's on the screen on the top. So when you're mixing in a song, um, you can kind of help nudge it, line it up. But now we have the waveform mode. So if you go into the shortcut menu, mm -hmm. you can click on waveform. Okay. Um, and then while you're at it, just go to RGB as well. Cause so many DJs, I still see using the blue waveform. Oh, and, right. Yeah, I don't know why, but, uh, uh, it might just be a familiarity thing. Yeah. Or but they don't know how to change it. That too. Know? That too. <laughs> um, so go into RGB mode and then, uh, also like you can see the waveform on top of, uh, the track you're mixing in. Oh, I love that. So like, if you're playing a new track, you can actually like line up the, the transients so much cleaner. Right. You know, yeah, because you see the other CDJ's waveform on the other, on both of them in a yeah. way, so you can sync them up. And I love being able to use the knob to like zoom in and zoom out, so I can mm -hmm. like zoom out and be like, "Wait, where is that break again? Oh, I see it's coming. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in now. I can see the kick drum that I'm about to scratch in, exactly, or know what I'm doing and bring in that part. Yep. And then if I'm doing the beat jump at all, I kind of know where I'm jumping to. You know, it's a little scary if you don't know the song that much, but. Yeah, Stuff I think like in that. general we've Looping. really yeah. yeah, we've really like kind of made it easier for if if you do just download like a batch of tracks that you haven't yeah. really spent a lot of time totally. learning, yeah. you can kind of figure your way out. Yeah. I know a lot of DJs hate on that like, oh, you got to know your music and have all the things, but like literally I played in Vegas Friday at a big pool gig and yeah. I was downloading up until the very end and I Definitely, I was on the 3000s and S11, yeah. and I was playing some tracks for the first time, and it was fun. I'm looking at them on the thing. I'm zooming in. I'm using Dude, as much as I can all the features. 100%. And it was I, great. I think some DJs will, I think, will hate on it, but yeah. I can say most DJs have probably done what, what yeah. we've done. I felt just, comfortable doing yeah. it, and I was like, oh, this is getting a good reaction. First time I played it, dope mashup, you know, by yep. whoever it is, you know, like, um, and and it's working, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. And so, like with with that, I mean, we have the the waveform mode, uh, which is really cool. But also, um, there's a thing called Link Q. So if you're using the DJM 900 Nexus 2, yeah, um, you can hit the Link Q button above the uh, the headphone adjuster. And uh, okay. what that does is when that button's on and lit up, yeah, you go over to the CDJ and you can actually press on the screen, um, either on the song that's playing, yeah, or on a song that's in one of your playlists and you can hear that song as a preview. So it's, that's amazing. It's super, super cool. What? So 
you put link Q on yep. and then you you're going through the list of songs mm-hmm. and you just press on it and you hear a preview of it rather than having to load it, see what's up, bring in the beginning, go there, fast forward through, go, you know, and do all that yep. work. It kind of gives you a preview of the middle of the song or something or wherever, or wherever, you, wherever your finger touches. You know? Oh, you're looking at the waveform kind of how in record box it has that tiny waveform. Yeah, form. it's like a little waveform. And it mm-hmm. does it on the CDJ. What? Yeah. I never knew that. It's super oh cool. Oh my God. I, I, and I, that's I, only with the 900. That's so, yeah, that's with, well, I, I think the V10 has it as well, but. Okay. Um, but not on the S11. There was a huge, uh. DJ uproar argument in the past week on Twitter between the 900 and S9. Oh, which, spill uh, the tea. I haven't heard this. Oh, God. I, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It was a nightmare. <laughs> I I never get into DJ debates on um, Twitter ever. I don't think I ever have in my life. I don't even use Twitter. I mean, I do. I like Twitter, but I try to keep it for jokes or information or just fun things. Yeah. Promotion. I don't know. But, uh, I'll read the wars between people. I'm not getting into it because honestly, I don't care. I'm like, I've made it this far without dealing with all that crap. And I like what I like and I do what I do and somehow it works. I don't care what anybody does. You know what I mean? I don't care if somebody's playing off the Hercules controller or a V10 or do whatever the fuck they want. Or an iPhone. You know, there's a guy who did a a boiler room set called iPhone DJ and it was a sick set. Yeah. Just on iPhone. Yeah. Just do 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 your your thing. thing. Look, Drew shows me crazy things on iPhone with DJ all the time. You know what I mean? So... Um, but, but this was a whole, so, but I was on an eight hour flight from London to New York and we had really good Wi-Fi, and I kept reading it and I held off for like four hours. And then I was like, I'm making one comment. And then it was like, no, why did I do this? And of course, DJ crooked shout to, uh, my podcast brother, uh, road podcast, you know, was like, fuck you. You know, he was just yeah. like, why'd you say this? You know, it turns the whole thing. Everyone's going crazy. I had my own opinion, you know. But it was just, it got into the whole, um, I think initially, I'm sure I'm saying the wrong thing. I'm sorry to everyone out there. But it was that the S9 is a mixer for hip hop DJs and the 900 is a mixer for EDM DJs is the, I think the basis. And then people were like, no, you're tripping. And the S9 is more just for scratch people, scratch DJs and the 900s for all types of DJs. And that the reason why is that the S9 didn't have as good of a sound card and the 900 has a better sound card. And then like sound people were weighing in. It was like the biggest debate. And then you should be able to, DJ on anything thing came into the debate, you know, and just turned into this whole long thing where it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. You well, know, it's just talking about exhausting. Us. Oh, they're talking about <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, the artwork of, I think the last road podcast was a 900 and an S9 shooting lasers at each other with explosions because oh, I love they this. talked about the whole thing. You got to listen to the episode. I mean, he yeah, send it went to me. through I- the whole fight, you know, cause crooked was at the center of it and like artistic, I think it all came from this guy artistic. He was DJing in Atlantic city. He was talking about how all the DJs were upset because there was, they had all requested an S nine and they got a 900 and everyone didn't like the 900 at the time. And they wanted the S nine and he felt like every lot more of the hip hop DJs wanted it. And so that just started the whole thing of hip hop versus EDM versus sound cards versus sound versus old school DJs versus new school DJs versus mm. scratch DJs versus And then you blah, open blah, up blah. Pandora's box and it's just like, oh, right. No. And then people are like, well, the S 11 has a better sound card. And like, we're not talking about the S 11. Okay. You know, it's just like, gets very, very deep. Well, we, I mean, we can, there's definitely a few facts that we can hammer yeah, out okay, now. Okay. Let's is, go, please. The S seven and the S 11. Yes. Are improved on the S nine. Okay. That's a fact. fact. That's a fact. <laughs> I mean, they just are, um, improved sound, improved sound card, okay. improved, improved everything really. Um, okay. And you know, we listen to the DJs and what they want. Uh, I would say that in general, um, we could just, you know, s- squash it right now and say that you, you can open format DJs can play on 900s. I've seen it. Right. Open format DJs can play on S sevens and S 11s. Uh, yes. you see it more frequently. Yes. Right. But also open format DJing includes EDM, which is an interesting yes. thing to think about. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not just hip hop, right? Yeah. So, true. um, so I think that in general, you know, find what vibes with you more and, and go for right. it. But, uh, the S 11 does have the Magville fader which is right. more for scratching and cutting. So I would say that the S11 and S7 are, are definitely going to be more uh, tuned to people who will scratch 
and cut. Right. And matter. even more tuned towards Serato in a way, right? Um, well. Or maybe record box and Serato. Re- record box and Serato, yeah. Um, and I think that I think that you can use Serato really well with the 900 Nexus Two as well. Right, um, definitely. You know, but but not like the cue points laid out and like all that stuff. I yeah, guess. there's definitely. I mean, you know, it's designed with that in mind. You know, yeah. the 900 Nexus Two I think is designed um, to be used with sticks. Right, uh, but also can be used with laptop. I mean, I I used and the, the four HID, channel and the yep. Yeah. I, I used HID mode in the club for the longest time uh, yeah, and, until I realized that uh, I kind of got. I got a little tired of uh, having to go in after a DJ and plug all my st- all my stuff in, <laughs> right? And then unplug it when another DJ was going, right? Sometimes I just left my laptop up there, like until the headline DJ was done. Yeah, you know. So like, I I think I opened for Steve Aoki once in St. Louis, and I right. was still using HID mode. Yeah, and it was so stressful. Uh, but thank, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, don't throw the cake on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like on my laptop. Yeah, he's like, sorry, bro, I got some icing in the space bar, but uh, we're good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. And even like I DJed these kids like way younger and we were doing a house night and they're like, oh, we would want to do B2B with you, bro, but you're on HID mode. We can't do it. We're only sticks. I'm like, well, we can do it, you know, but it was like it turned into a whole thing. And I'm like, all right, I see what you're saying, you know. Right. I mean, you can also like, yeah, you, you can just press a button and it'll switch between USB versus totally. HID control. And but kind of when there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen and it gets confusing and whatever yeah. people drinking or you know whatever it's oh my it gosh gets confusing i used to bring my laptop out and i'd put a little protector over it every single time because the amount of times that i had to turn my laptop off and like dump it out because beer would get spilled oh my in. god and it was never me it was always <laughs> uh someone you know kind of dancing around me of course a little beer on the laptop yeah but that's never good. Never good. <laughs> never good. And and I guess one more thing for the facts, which I think we know, but like you said, the 900 and the 900s, all the series of them, had a better sound card or sound quality than the S9 for a while, right? Or was that is well, that is that noticeable? Everyone's like... That's supposedly a fact in the DJ world and all the sound guys say it and the people in the big Vegas systems. I personally have not been able to tell completely, but some other people are very adamant, like, obviously it sucks. You know, the S9 sounds like shit and the 900 sounds great. I'm like, I've never noticed that, but... Well, if we're comparing the S9 to the 900 Nexus 2, right. um, I, I can't speak specifically to the sound cards and the differences between them. Okay. We'd have to do a shootout, right. uh, you know, but at the end of the day, no. I mean, you're not going to notice a difference. Right. You're not going to notice a difference. I mean, you're... By by the way, I mean you're in a you're in a loud club. I mean it really also yeah. comes down to how the speakers are tuned. That's um, the other thing you never know the system. Like yeah. it was after that whole debate, it was like on a Wednesday, and then that Friday I showed up to a club in Boston and I used the 900 Nexus two, mm-hmm. and then the next day I've DJed in Saratoga Springs and I used the S nine, and yeah. I was like I recorded both my sets. I noticed the crowd at both places, and I was gonna tweet like I used both mixers. It was totally fine. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't want to get back into the debate but i mean i no one came up to me like your set was great but the sound quality stepped down on the s9 there buddy uh <laughs> we we left the club early because well, of the, your sound right. you know it's like <laughs> what you're drunk they're drunk trying to hook up with each other like i think that's the main focus are, uh, oh i think i think the question is are they dancing yes or no yeah uh is it the sound's fault or the dj's fault I yeah mean, and why are people there what kind of dj is it what are they listening to and on and all that stuff I mean, 100 you know. there's so many factors and then that gets into the whole like you know mp3 aiff you know well that's the other funny thing people are like the sound quality bro and it's like also you're playing 128k mp3s ripped from youtube i don't know you know what i mean like on a massive vegas system so definitely how are you judging the sound or like records you ripped 15 years ago from a vinyl you know or something like yeah when i listen to the vinyl that i recorded in in the beginning of serato it sounds like shit i have to go rebuy the songs you Mm -hmm. know from from the mp3 oh yeah i always download like the remastered versions if they're available you know i'd rather it sound a little cleaner yeah so there's a lot of factors in there. Tons of factors. But, but, but yeah, I think, uh, I know, um, you know, there's definitely some, some debates, but it's like, let's all get along. Let's, yeah. let's all just play music, you know, and I dance know. together. I guess Twitter's not about getting along. So that's why <laughs> yeah, we all just live in harmony. <laughs> Twitter's about fighting through very short, uh, 
amounts of characters being allowed. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I, I try, like I was telling you earlier, I try to stay off of Twitter for the most part, but uh, you know, I got, I got called on cause I did, I made a Creed tech house remix and, oh, and yeah. so, someone posted in online and was like, Oh no, the tech house bros have, have done it again. Like they're, they're now <laughs> remixing Creed and it's oh like, my God. Uh, and then all the comments were like, uh, well, well actually, you know, this, this might, this, this might be kind of cool. Can I, can we hear it? Like this, this sounds right. kind of cool. And then uh, I just commented and I'm like, uh, Hey, for all my tech house bros, here's the link. If you want to download it. Right. And then the guy comments, he's like, uh, Oh, it's actually kind of a good song. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. It's always the haters that come back around and are yeah. like, uh, actually pretty good, man. Uh, yeah. You send yeah. that to me. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I played it like four times last week. Yeah. It sounded great. You look on SoundCloud, they're your number one listener of it. <laughs> right. or something. You're like, come on, dude. I can see. I see the data. The, um, the datas don't lie. Yeah. The data the numbers don't lie, bro. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, there's, there's the haters out there. But yeah, DJs love arguing on Twitter and I try yeah. to stay out of it. But um, it you know leads to good good material for the show. It's a, And also good like conversation starters. You know, yes. in general- we want to be hearing the good and the bad yeah, comments that people totally. have about the gear. Yeah. Uh, if someone thinks that for whatever reason, our, our buttons on our S 11, you know, are, are, are too soft or too hard or whatever. Right. We want to know what their opinion is and yeah. whatnot. So yeah, send, send it over. You know, I love them all. Good. I mean, the fact that the buttons were bigger on the S 11 got mm-hmm. me spoiled. So when I go back to the S nine, I'm like, well, they feel yep. small, you know, even though they're not, but it feels like different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love this. I mean, I love the S11. I, I'll use any of them. It's like I'm I'm ready to DJ on any sort of equipment. You know, yep. my ideal is at this point CDJ 3000s and the S11 mm-hmm. is like my dream setup because I kind of know it. And even after today, I know it so much better. I think another thing that blows DJs away, at least in open format, is the instant doubles thing. You just hold down the sync button for like two seconds and then all of a sudden the track playing on the left side is on the right side oh yeah instant doubled and then you can just do that and then you can click the beat jump a half thing forward and you can instantly do doubles like doubled up like bap bap you know kind of like yeah I, I, doubles. I actually showed a few people that the other day and like a light bulb went off like what instant doubles it's so That's nice insane. and yeah it's it's so 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 useful too. You know, so some useful. people scratch on the left deck right. only. You know, and yeah. some people scratch on the right deck right. only. And so you don't want to have to like, yeah, mix in a new song. Yeah, or, or you have a routine song. that yeah. you know you want to bring in this on the right side because you scratch it in like that, and then you go there, and then you just want to do some cool doubles or a cool thing. Sure, or, I do know. the whole double thing you were talking about, where you kind of just like move it back a, a half. A, yeah, a, I think like a half a beat or something. Exactly. Do 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 yeah. Do, do. Yeah, and it adds a lot, and then you can start bringing in the effects. Like, I'll do whatever, the space effect or the filter or, yeah. you know, put on the delay lightly, and then you can be doing the doubles with those on, off, you know, and yeah. doing your own little James Hype type things. <laughs> there you go. I mean, he's he's uh, he's a master, man. Yeah, he's, good. he's incredible. He's good. Yeah. Dope. Well, um, let's see. I, I got some more Pioneer stuff. I definitely want to get into your, um, your, your music career, too, because you have so much good music. I know you just came out with all this stuff, so few more pioneer questions and then let's get into that. But, um, I know that you talked about the shows you have done and are doing. You did the DJs and PJs show. Um, you have a new show called out of office that has that started yet or are you just filming it? Uh, so we're still in the filming stages of that right okay. now. And so we're identifying artists that are going to, uh, work well with that, that kind of structure and whatnot. Right. And basically, um, it's similar to the DJs and PJs, but it's in person. Yeah. Um, and it's starting in our studio, but, um, since it is called out of office, right. Ironically being in our studio, we're, we're also, our plan is to bring it to other areas too. Okay. Um, out of the office. Right. Um, um, but you know, it's, it's going to feature, uh, a performance and then a quick, like 10 minute interview afterwards. And, um, nice. I'm, I'm going to be, you know, asking some of the questions afterwards too. So, That's great. uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really excited for it. It's, it's really cool. Our first guest, uh, uh, DJ dynamics, um, who I know you've had on the show and he's yeah. a great friend. He's awesome dude. So dope. Yeah. Very talented. And so he's, um, that's going to be airing here. Uh, well, let's see. 
the next few days. I oh, think. really? Yeah, nice. I was just I was just reviewing it actually earlier. And so. it's on your YouTube only or other places too? Yeah, so that'll be on YouTube only. We might okay. also feature it on Twitch as like a one-off thing, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on YouTube and we're going to cut some bits and pieces, I think. And for, do you have to like license the music or do you, or does YouTube pick it out digitally and then give the licenses to the people and that's how you're allowed to do it or something? Yeah, so YouTube is really interesting. I mean, they're... They've, they've sort of figured it out with the labels now to this point right. where like, it, it's sort of just, um, you know, I remember they used to mute. Right. Right. They used to mute yeah. sections. Just like the, Twitch does. And yeah. Yeah. Well now it's Instagram just, will pull you down and yep. Yep. Facebook and stuff. Yep. Instagram has been getting worse at that actually too. And that's actually yeah. something I've been, the algorithm is, is changing like all the time. It's starting to drive me nuts. It's, it's definitely Instagram. annoying and weird. Yeah. But, but YouTube basically, I think it would just, uh, I think we just demonetize it if if it because uh, right. it, it would send the they money. monetize the parts for the people who own it yep. for yeah if if they found that you know uh, I don't know there was a song by by Twista used in dynamic set or or a song by yeah you know whoever uh, Cardi B um, they're gonna get a chunk of that right which is so nice because obviously we're headed into the future it's digital we're all gonna be sharing music with each other streaming doing all these different ways of doing things together, watching things, listening to things. And so to have it just be stifled by like, sorry, you can't do it is so stupid. We're going to figure out a way to do it one way or another. So I know work with us or be left behind. And I feel like YouTube seems like the one company that's trying to work with everybody Twitch as well. But I know, I don't know what they're, they don't have the situation where they can pick it out and pay the people. Yet. Right. I think that someone who was really, really forward thinking is the label uh, Monster Cat. Right. We, we work with them a lot. And, and they just make it royalty free or something? Yeah. So they worked with Twitch. So they were like, hey, all of our music, if you're a content creator, you can use all our music and we won't strike you. Right. You or know? it's not royalty free. It's it's free to use, but then they'll get the uh, royalties maybe. Yeah. I don't something. know how the finances I don't know how it work out really. I, it's, that's It's such a crazy world. You know, right. the, the whole like DMCA and, and all that stuff yeah. is just... A little over my head, but I got, I learned a lot of it when we were doing all the live streaming during the pandemic. Right. Um, because, you know, there was all these strikes happening all over the place and DJs yeah. were talking about it all the time. And, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully. But obviously that's what we need to do. It's like, you know, D nice is about to play at Carnegie hall with like a sim, you know, a symphony orchestra and like all these dope hip hop artists and R and B people. And like, he's going to DJ and all that was sparked from him live streaming DJing online. So mm -hmm. it's like, obviously we need to be able to have the freedom to do that. And it's going to birth so much cool creativity and connection around the world. So it sucks that, some platforms aren't letting us do it, you know, but uh, hopefully I agree. it keeps growing, you know. I agree. And I mean, I think that also like with that, I mean, you know, sampling was such a huge part of, exactly. of house music and a yeah. huge part of how the scene kind of came about. And it's like, right. I feel like there needs to be a way that we can all somehow work together and the finances yeah. all work out somehow. But right. I don't know, it might be another 10 years. Yeah. Was, well, yeah. lawyers kind of make things go slowly, you know, I guess yeah. for their own <laughs> right. billing purposes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're like uh, con construction workers, you know? So yeah. They're <laughs> like, oh, well, this will be done in uh, 2047. You yeah, know, yeah. You're like, what the hell, man? Oh, this, this pothole? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. Someone will get to it sometime. You're like, you know, I've I'm on seen lunch. someone fix that in like a day. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. Same. I think that's going on with the lawyer stuff, but things are moving forward. And it's like we said with the Dropbox situation you guys have and the beat source situation and beat port and the ability to do all that like things are moving forward and eventually we're going to live in this metaverse you know or whatever it is and all of us sharing music digitally and and kind of even that's where the pandemic kind of brought us all closer together you know and you're watching djs from brazil and toronto and la and you know dallas like all within a few hours and everyone's kind of becoming friends and sharing with each other and raiding in and doing all that yeah stuff. i mean i'm very bullish on the metaverse honestly i think it's super cool yeah um and and honestly like you know part of pioneer djs like you know future is we're really thinking about the younger generation and how do we right. get more people into DJing and yeah. excited about creating. I mean, you guys could have a freaking DJ school in Roblox probably or something. You know what I mean? It's like my son's in Roblox all the time doing things and they're building games and they got private servers and public servers and they're meeting people in these different worlds and there's the Nike world and LeBron James doing things and yeah. he's hyped when he gets the crazy shoes in there. And 
I've, you know, I have Oculus or whatever it's called now. Um, oh, the Quest 2? Yeah. I've got that too. Actually, we we just partnered with a, a company called Tribe XR where I, our I CDJs followed, are in there. That's what I was going to talk about. I follow yep. Tribe XR. I've yep. seen um, this guy, DJ Hoppa, that I know does these um, lessons. And I've seen different people do literally whole DJ sets and lessons on real CDJs using all the real functions and learning how to use the CDJ. Cause that's the thing. They're expensive. Like it took me a long time to become a professional DJ and be able to afford buying a set of CDJs and a mixer, you know, yep. it was like six, $7,000. I mean, it's yep. insane, you know? So, um, to be able to go into the metaverse or virtual reality and pretty much learn it almost the same way, if not better than having it in your house and then being able to then go to a place and practice and feel more comfortable is kind of incredible, you know? And that's why I think there is a lot to it. And watching that tribe, what's it? Tribe XR. Yeah. Tribe XR. Tribe XR was like mind blowing to me. Cause you're they're like, okay, we got the three thousands now. This is what you can do. And had all the functions and all the stuff. And you could put your own music library in there and play and do the set. And I'm it's like, amazing. I mean, uh, honestly, if, if, if so anyone crazy. at home has an Oculus Quest 2, yeah. just like, and you're into DJing whatsoever, just download Tribe XR, it's try it out. so dope. It's unbelievable. And I love just going in there and just like messing around. Um, you know, we've, we, they've really like modeled our gear to how right. it looks. To, it looks can you so invite nice. in, you know what I haven't done though, is like, can you invite your friends in like, yo, let's have a session, you know, like, yeah, I like think if you me and you want to meet in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cause I think that's how Hoppe was doing the lessons. Like yep. he's literally teaching people and then he had live instruction and pre-recorded, which is kind of dope. His character had pre-recorded yeah, and, he's got and the instruction. Hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like, and, him. <laughs> and, and, and he would almost like, you would be able to interact with him live, but it was pre-recorded. Yeah. So he would show you how to do the thing and then you could pause him and rewind him showing you how to enter the music and doing all the stuff. And yeah. They'll like, do live classes too and stuff and events and whatnot. And that's something that like, you know, um, the Oculus system is really trying to do more of is right. like, more live things. So you tune in at this time right. and, and, and sign up. Can and, you integrate that though? Like I got asked to DJ in this world and it's mm -hmm. called like your ball or something and it's out of Berlin and they want mm -hmm. me to wear a motion capture suit. Um, and do it's it. really dope. I'm going to do it. But it, uh, the other, the thing is, is that I won't have turntables or anything in the system. So I'll be in, I will either DJ live or pre-record my set and I'll be in one of their venues and they have sort of like a Fortnite ish world where you can teleport into like that bar or that venue or this outside venue right. that they've built. Right. And then I tell everyone to come in and then I think you buy like an NFT bracelet. It's like 30 Matic, you know, or whatever it is. Yeah. And you get this bracelet and that gives you entry into my show. Huh. And then I'm in there going like, what's up guys? See you in the front row. Hey, here we go. And, but they're like, you can't have your DJ set up. And I'm like, well, shit, I want to be able to do it. And, th and then in reality, they were kind of like, well, no one cares about watching you push all the buttons. I'm like, I guess that's kind of true. I'm like, then can I have like aliens attacking the crowd or something, you know, like weird things that wouldn't happen in real life. And so we were discussing different ideas, but it would be dope to somehow, like to me, the whole metaverse thing is so cool because of the interoperability or I don't know how you say the word, but having things interoperable where you could take Tribe XR, put it into a Facebook app or a Decentraland world or a Roblox world, like bring my Tribe XR, just like a mobile DJ would bring it to this office or something in there and then be yeah. like, meet me in there or in this world I'm going to do. Like, I don't know if that's possible it's, yet. It's, it's possible. I mean, the more, the more mobile the, the Oculus gets, right. You know, the, the, the longer the battery life, the, yeah. the, the better that, that technology gets, it's very yeah. possible. And I mean, for example, we just, um, well not just, but I think it was prior to the pandemic, yeah. we worked with a company called Sanzar okay. and, um, kind of like what you're talking about. Sanzar, uh, is owned by uh, second life. So second life, you know, was like that avatar That's thing. That's like the going, OG, the kinda, OG Decentraland kind of yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Like, like a, like a Sims sort of deal. Right. But you, um, kind of can go into this virtual reality world in Sanzar yeah. and we built and modeled a custom, uh, DDJ 200 controller. Wow. And um, modeled custom headphones, like glow in the dark neon headphones that we've never developed right. um, just for those avatars in there. And so what our idea was, hey, we worked with Monster Cat. We bring people in. 
yeah. uh, for this live show where there's like, right. live performers. And um, there was kind of like what you were talking about, like shooting the aliens out. They have a thing called uh, Party in a Box oh, where wow. you could press one of the buttons on the DDJ 200s. And uh, I, I, it was kind of fun. We came up with some fun ideas. You press one of the buttons and sharks would fall from out of the sky. That's what I was picturing. That's yeah. amazing. You press another button. Because I'm like, like, we fire. don't need to just recreate the cryo cannon. Let's do some shit that would never be possible in the physical world. You it know? was insane. I'll have to send you like a recap video or something. Because yeah, please. Uh, my favorite thing was the sharks, though. I mean, you press the button, it's just like, wow. That's the best. <laughs> right, and you're in the crowd, and you're like, whoa, what's happening? You know, you're, you're having such yeah. a... Because all of this, the reason why festivals are so big and all this is because of the experience. It's all experiential things, and it's all like, oh, I want to be part of this crazy time. That's why you go to Coachella. You don't necessarily need to be a fan of everybody you're watching. You're part of this crazy experience, and yeah. the same with the raves. You know, when people like hate on, oh, you don't know who that DJ is, but it's like, it doesn't matter. They're there for the whole experience from beginning to end and the top to bottom and all of it. And everybody has their own learning curve of all of it. So with the metaverse stuff, that's how I see it. And I see Twitch as almost this 2D version of it. But as we get into the Oculus and Quest 2 and whatever, all the different things, you're more in the 3D and not everyone's going to want to do the 3D, you know, like it's yeah. fine to like, I did this burning man thing and like you could have watched it in, I think the 3D or the 2D, you know, and on Twitch. And I think it's nice to have those options just like when you're watching a 3D movie or you want to just watch the normal movie, you know, like. Yeah, do you remember that when they had 3D TVs? Yeah. And you would have to put the goggles on or whatever. Yeah. And I just, I remember like, I just remember getting motion sick. Totally. <laughs> and I was like, I yeah. can't do this. Same. <laughs> this and that's off. what's going to happen with people with the, um, the Ocul, you know, the Quest 2 and all that yeah. stuff. But man, it, I was blown away by the Tribe XR thing and the potential of all of that. And same, I'm, you know, bullish on all that stuff. Yeah. And, and of course, I see all the crypto and the NFT stuff, like the massive amounts of bullshit in there and like rip off things and Ponzi scheme and all that stuff. But I also see the potential and the genuine things that could be really cool. And even some of the stuff I've got, like there's dope artists that I support in there that I've bought their NFTs. And like last week they were like, yo, if you burn uh, this NFT that you bought, we'll send you a signed big, huge, high quality print from the artist. So yep. that was great. I burned my NFT that I had bought for whatever at the time, Ethereum. And then now they're shipping me the poster and I get to put it in my world, you know, and then I get to put it in my house, not my world. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and like, I think that there are, I don't think I'm being ripped off, you know, in that world from that person, you know, but I do. Right. And I think that there's so much potential and just this where they were like, Oh, you have to buy the, the NFT bracelet to come into your show. I'm like, I like that idea. I think that there's things in there and I think DJs can come together in a way, you know, that we can um, just have our own worlds the way we're doing on Twitch and it can keep advancing in that way. There's yeah. there's a way for us to come together. And also in the same way that Beat Source is coming, like show the labels and the world the power that the collective of DJs have, you know, in the way that everyone's like, we need a union. Like, yeah, I don't know if a union's gonna happen because everyone DJs at every bar. But there's a way to show the collective of DJs if we're all part of these like membership communities, whether it's through NFTs or um, whatever it is, and then be like, look, let's go meet in our world and you can have a listening party and there's DJs from literally every continent in the world all meeting in this room at the same time and you get to play us your music and we have a pioneer setup, you know, virtual setup and someone's DJing it in there and like- What's well, about the immersion a and then B, you know, building the community. Yeah. You know, how, how can you build community globally and, and it feel like it's real? Thing? Yeah. And I think you have the technology now where you can literally be in a room with somebody uh, and feel like just for a second, like maybe this is real life. Right. Which is crazy to think yeah. about. And then on the NFT things, um, you know, I dabbled in making my own NFTs and yeah. I got really deep into it and whatnot. And, right. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I actually just woke up this morning to a, to a secondary sale and I got like 17 bucks or something right. just for doing nothing because exactly. people are selling my NFTs. It's incredible. And, uh, but, 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 you know, there's so much NFTs that are like kind of, you know, junk. Right? Yeah. And, and just like anything in the beginning, there's going to be all that stuff, you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. everything's going to get a bad rap because of the bad parts of it. But I think that the, 
there's a reason why a lot of smart people are into this technology yeah. and there's a way it can be utilized. And in the same way, like we're talking about with DJs being able to go in the digital world and share our DJ sets, there's something with that, you know, in there and to be able to do live podcasts, educational things, DJ sets and yeah. things that are, that connect us in the same way. I was being able to watch DJ Marky in Brazil and then raid into scratch bastard in Toronto. It's, would be cool to have those worlds in there, you know, and somehow be connected. Well, so we're kind of and in a way communities. Yeah. Yeah. And in a way we're kind of the early adopters, yeah. you know, I mean, there's, um, I mean, for example, do you remember the Nintendo power glove? Yes. And I saw you doing a, a <laughs> live stream oh. as your driver 405 guy with it. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, we can, we can absolutely touch on that. Um, I, I, I was thinking like with the power glove though, how, how kind of, it was kind of a failed product, right? But it did yeah. pave the way, but it for was specific early. technologies. You exactly. Know what I mean? That was the beginnings happening. of what the Oculus stuff is, or even Nintendo yep. Wii or different things yes. that are possible yes. now. And at the time, yes, it was almost too early and it was like a failed product. I still thought it was the dopest thing when I was a kid. I but still think it's dope. Yeah, but it was too early, just like a lot of things are too early. It's still, like you said, the idea of it paved the way for all this stuff that's going to be possible and still isn't even ready or you know, happening. Yet. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure when that movie, the wizard came out and you know, the guy was like, Oh, it's so bad. And he was like driving and look, he looked real cool and whatnot. Yeah. You, you know, nowadays you look at that and you're like, dude, that is so cheesy. Yeah. Um, but you know, the Nintendo power glove, you're right. If there was none, there wouldn't be a Nintendo Wii and then there yeah. wouldn't be a Nintendo switch. So right. just imagine in 10 years from now, uh, if there was no Oculus quest two, if there was no kind right. of like intermediate, um, dude, maybe we're going to be wearing glasses that we can just be like, you know, bing, ring somebody up. And then there's like a hologram, like, right. Just, just like pops up. Yeah. You know, who knows? I think so. I think they'll get it lighter. Cause that's the thing. It is heavy on your head kind of, you know what I mean? And yeah. like the lighter they get it, the better it'll be. And, um, and the more like, um, reputable people and companies in the space that make solid products, I think, and aren't just like the money grab things will be cool, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I like that tribe XR thing just seems like they're approaching it from a, a real DJ standpoint, you know? And, yeah. um, and yeah, creating these communities of DJs that can like come together. And I mean, I even like, I was working with this guy, um, urban medium in Atlanta and, you know, we built, he, he got this like a, a virtual nightclub built, you know, and now, now we have it, the whole thing, and we have it in this one world and we can drop it into all the worlds. And we've been experimenting with that. And then there's yeah. special rooms in the back that could be like token gated for you to get into if you want. And it's pretty dope. And you can broadcast the Twitch, you know, up there. Um, but it would be cool to one day be able to integrate the tribe XR and be up there DJing and, I mean, there could be a DJ every hour. Like, there's DJs playing yeah. at all times right now on Twitch. Yeah, let me get so. guest lists to that. <laughs> I mean, I got you. You could come in. I, come I will show it to you. Just like drinking a virtual yeah. beer. Well, that's the thing. I'll show you. You know, I could hit you later, and we'll. I'll show you how to. You know, what we're doing in there. You yeah. know, at the time, <laughs> and um, I think th there's just a lot of potential. I lo I love all that stuff. So it's cool to hear that you're into it too, and super into it. And I think Pioneer is is as well. Very yeah. very much into it. Um, and you know, it's just. Honestly, the options are endless. I mean, we're, we're just right. going to see uh, over the next 10, 20 years um, just more crazy technologies coming out yeah. in the VR and AR space. Right. Uh, I mean, we had the yeah. Beyond the Music retreat, you know, and it was like a lot of people weren't able to come. You could have a virtual version of that eventually, mm -hmm. you know, where everybody's there virtually, you know, and you could have the virtual one and the in-person one, you yeah. know, and sure just connect I everybody in a different way, you know, and people that Absolutely. couldn't come from... Japan or Israel or wherever they were that unable to travel there, you know? Yeah. I think that's the thing too, is like, you know, somebody in, yeah, in Israel might not be able to make it to Lollapalooza, but if right. they get to a point where you can buy a virtual ticket and you can yeah. literally feel like you're there, yeah. uh, once the, once the, the, the design is good enough that you feel fully immersed right. into it. Um, you know, I know even Porter Robinson experimented with secret sky festival where you're in there and you can kind of like inter, um, you can mingle with people and stuff like that. Yeah. And like this sort of like 2D and ish worlds. So yeah. There's a lot of really cool things happening from that right. kind of concept. And you concept. can feel like I was in that spatial.io. That's where we put our yeah. virtual club. And it has that spatial or however you say it, uh, thing where 
the DJ is over there and you're, if you're, you're talking to somebody and it's really loud, just like you're in a club and you're like, Hey, let's go outside. And you just walk away and the sound gets lower and in your headphones or your speakers, it's like much lower and you can still have the conversation with the person. Yeah. And it, you know, it just emulates real life in certain ways, but things that you could never do. So I think there's a well, lot. It's interesting because I feel like back in the day, like there were MMO RPGs, you know, like world of Warcraft, yeah. RuneScape, like club penguin. I don't know if you guys ever played any of those. I don't those. know that, but that yeah. was that was my that was my like shit back then. Yeah, you know, I was like I would play, I would play all those games, and um, you know, you're able to talk to people in real time, and you have this yeah. avatar and whatnot, and um, those those were kind of like the the OG metaverses, if right. you will. Like, totally, you're you're in in you know whatever it was. Uh, you're in, in town in World of Warcraft, and you're like talking to people, and like, yeah, would you like to trade us a, a sword, sir? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like, yes. Yeah, so I think, you know, there's so much to that and uh, hopefully, you know, doesn't get ruined by all the like crazy crypto greedy people, you know, but Yeah, I think I think there's going to be a lot of that still, but I think that the NFTs and World Web 3.0 and everything is definitely paving the way for for um, you know, um I think that we need to be maybe not full send right now as, as DJs and artists, but we need to be right. uh, aware of what's going on yeah. in the VR space and the NFT space. Yeah, yeah I definitely. agree. Crazy. All right. I know it went off on a tangent, but I love all that oh, stuff. I love it. And uh, it's so interesting. It's cool to hear that you guys are into it. And yeah, I always wondered yep. when I was seeing the Tribe XR, like who's behind this and what's going on? This is mm -hmm. so incredible. And it's definitely something DJs, I think, should experiment with. Yes. Um, so, um, oh, wh what about you, you? You do tutorials too for Pioneer, right? Or you did do some tutorial videos and you were like the on-camera person? So... I'm, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who do kind of the tutorials right. uh, for Pioneer. Yeah, uh, for the U.S. side, um, I've done a few. Okay, we've also got uh, PJ Pulse. Yeah, J. Okay, um, but yeah, I just did one on the VM series speakers for Instagram. We just did a little reel oh, talking dope. about kind of the, uh, you know, why the VM series are cool. Yeah. DJs and producers. Yeah. Nice. And are there, I know like you're, you're a lot of your job is to help DJs and help market the products and do all that stuff. Um, do you have any like crazy stories where somebody has like needed like a CDJ 3000 helicoptered in on a mountain or like some, has any, anyone, any urgent things ever happened to you like that? Urgent things, or like the dumbest shit someone's asked you for or like oh, something. Man. I don't know. That's a really, that's a really good one. Um, <laughs> You know, there's a lot of, I get a lot of last minute requests for sure. Um, typically it's like, Hey, my, my back line or something got messed right. up. Can you ship a CDJ tomorrow kind of yeah. thing? And I'm like, shit, uh, <laughs> let's see what I got. Cause right. I don't know. <laughs> like um, supply chain issue, supply chain <laughs> issues. Yeah. There's, there's definitely, you know, I won't name names, but there's definitely been some, uh, uh, we've actually had to send a courier like, you know, mm. of like some headphones or like a CDJ to some DJs right. and, um, some, some, you know, have approached us for like last minute music videos and whatnot, yeah. but, uh, nothing like, nothing like super, super weird, you know, it's, yeah. it's very, uh, Straight very ahead. cordial. Every DJ that we work with is super, super sweet and like right. very, very. I think nice everyone feels lucky to just be able to talk to you guys and be associated with you, you know. And yeah, stuff, so. yeah, you know, I think that the the feelings are mutual, right? I mean, like yeah. we're, we're happy they're using our gear and we're happy yeah. that they're um, that they're 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 such like big, you know, uh, proponents of of pioneer right. stuff. Yeah, uh, but. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll keep thinking on that. I, there's nothing really uh, no, that comes to that's mind good. off the top of my that's head. That's good right there. Yeah. And um, so, and then as far as like, you know, you obviously seem like you're very good at time management. I don't know if that's true, but. Oh, I don't know about that. But You uh, handle but so you. many things, you know, like thank you. <laughs> just doing like small research into the amount of things you do, you know, your job alone, you're doing so many projects, mm -hmm. you do so much stuff. You've been there for five years. You're obviously successful at it. Everyone loves you there and, you know, like a lot of cool things. But you also have your side project, uh, Roy LaCroix, which, uh, you know, already is controversial because some people hate and love the water, the bubbly water, I think. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. You know, you get both sides of the spectrum. I have people that religiously love it. Some people think it tastes bad. There's all these memes now. I mean, I, I came up <laughs> with the name like six years ago because yeah. I was just like, I was drinking all, all this LaCroix and uh, my roommate <laughs> at the time was like, it's like, you know, 
he started calling me Roy LaCroix because he's just like, dude, you're you're a regular Roy LaCroix, man. Like you that's just hilarious. You, you drink a lot of LaCroix. And, uh, and then I was like thinking of a new DJ name and I'm like, that's that's going to work. We're going to do that. <laughs> Have they ever come after you? Like, hey, man, you got to chill with the name. LaCroix? Yeah. No, uh, thank God. I mean, if they want to, or sponsor work, you, if they want to work with me, you know, <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if you're watching, um, no, I think got to make a beat out of like opening the can and crushing it. I do shit. actually. So, so <laughs> I have, like, I do actually have like little can pops in some of my really? like, stairs. Oh, that's incredible. You, you might not ever like ever notice, but I, I layer like that's with so like, good. Can pops and stuff. But um, yeah, no, the the Lacroix thing uh, is really funny because it came out with all these memes about yeah. like hint of hint of lime, and you the know, hint like, of hint. It's like uh, someone could, or what do they say? Like, someone yells a random fruit in the other room. That's what Lacroix is, right? You know, like yeah. that's what it tastes like. Um, but <laughs> like I the coconut one. I'm like, what is what is this taste? This tastes like not. I don't coconut. like the coconut one. Actually, no, full it's really bad. Like no it. offense, but but, <laughs> but Lacroix, the, the water company, they actually. Um, well, I posted a um, something on Instagram. Uh, it's still up. Yeah, I, I I put a nice little photo. It's when I got the iPhone that had portrait mode for the first time. Right, and I took a photo and I, and I said, uh, "Drinking wine out of Lacroix cans," <laughs> and like because you know we poured wine in the Lacroix yeah, can. and uh, the one of the guys from Lacroix Water was like, "Oh, this is a really cool photo. Like, can we use this in our social media marketing?" Oh wow! And I was like, "I'm like, dude, it's 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 your product. And yeah, I, I I'm kind of inspired by your name, so right, of course, yeah." Um, but what's funny is that I, I work with a label in, in Paris uh, called Broderskab, and uh, they they always thought that it was Roy Lacroix. Oh, that's funny. So, you know, there's that sort of gray area, I guess. <laughs> um, and I guess I'm on the record, <laughs> you know, saying this, but uh, no, I think it's funny. I mean, I, I also, you know, have um, uh, just been a big sparkling water guy. Yeah. You know, in general. I know. I see you in here. You're, you're a trader. You're not drinking the... The real stuff. I'm drinking the <laughs> drinking the off brand. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, the project is really dope. The music project. I listened to your latest you, uh, release on um, Bandcamp called Roy Meets World. I loved your whole marketing campaign towards yeah. it with the Boy Meets World and the hilarious '90s nostalgia, you know, wavy VHS uh, tracking tape thing, and and the music behind it, and like the you know the humor behind it is. Like, I love it, but also goes with, I feel like, the vibe of the music, which is kind of, like, upbeat, but has, like, the 90s samples in it in a way, but mixed with the new, like, bass-heavy, dope DJ house music that everybody loves, and it's just, like, super funky, you know, and not too hard. Like, it, it's, like, in that light, not light, but, like, upbeat way, I guess. Yeah, I don't thank know how, you, man. How else yeah. to describe no, it, No, that's right? a good way to put it. Um, okay. I think that, in general, the, the Roy it's Meets fun. World... You know, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. You know, yeah, that, fun you can it. feel it like in there, and then you're incorporating like the old school '90s samples, yep. you know, and uh, mixed with other like funny little vocals, and you know, it's just it's good, and you can like leave it on. I had it on the background writing questions, but also I could picture it like in the club, just banging out, and yeah, I mean, I I, I had dancing. so much fun with it, and I had this idea. I mean, I've had the Roy Meets World idea for a while because I mean, I grew up watching Boy Meets World right. and watching all these 90s sitcoms. And I was like, yeah, what if I kind of just, you know, took the 90s rave sound, made it a little more tech housey. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely artists who are doing it. You know, I'm not the first one to do it. Yeah. But, but I mean, yeah, I feel fun. like when, it, when people say that to me, I'm like, yo, there's like how many pizza places are there in the world? Like you yeah, bring true. your own thing or coffee shops or everything. Like everybody can do the thing. You just bring your own little feeling to it. You know, if, even though if, if everyone's doing a similar thing, like I still think you're, yes, you have things that sound similar, but it's definitely your own. Yeah. I mean, for sure. And I think that the whole project, I mean, Roy LaCroix is a very nineties inspired, uh, a tech house project. Right. Uh, and I've kind of positioned it that way. And then yeah. I have the driver 405 project, right. which is 80s synth wave and 80s synth pop. Yeah. And I've positioned it that way too. I mean, I wear a power glove and aviators and stuff, but right. with the, with like the kind of Roy LaCroix project, you know, I built this, I built these two tracks and, um, I sent it over to pop gang records. Okay. And they do the cyber rodeo party here in LA and they're like right. really, really big in the underground house scene. And, okay. uh, they just loved it. And they're like, dude, we'd love to sign this. Let's do it. And, and Jordan nice. and Chris over there are just, you know, the, the, the nicest dudes and, um, great. they, uh, yeah, they, they took it on and they, they helped me kind of come up with some of the concepts and some of the, uh, the designs. And then we did a EP release party last, um, last Friday with it. And so you had like the big, 
like the visuals up there with like my face is like a looks like a little South Park right. know, face or whatever. Oh yeah, I saw that like, promo. It was really good. Yeah, it yeah. was like mouthing out all the parts of the song and stuff. Yeah, that was that was an absolute blast, man. And That's so dope. And you did it at Catch One, right? Uh, yeah, that was at Catch One. Yeah. Okay. And then my my girlfriend made these little like popsicle stick heads. <laughs> nice. She, that she handed out to all these people. That's great. Like, my face on it and and whatnot, but. Probably the most fun part of that was creating like the the sitcom uh, kind of like family or no, it was a Full House yeah. inspired sort of sitcom so reel. Yeah, I saw. Um, I think there was one of me like opening Lacroix and I was going to shock a Lacroix into your face. It's just like there was that was an accident actually, just sprays into my face. Oh my like, god! Oh. And you like paused it at the perfect moment yeah. where it was like, eh, and then puts your like the credit. It yeah. was like, yeah, definite good yeah. Uh, editing on that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That I learned Premiere Pro during the pandemic. Oh, you edited. Very, it? I edited it all. Oh, yeah, really good. This, my stuff. Amazing. Was so, Damn. I was bored and I was You're like, You're one man machine over here. I know, man. I'm busy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm busy. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, that's dope. And so where'd you, so you kind of explained, but where you got your inspiration, like who are some either DJs or producers that you look up to or that you like to listen to um, Yeah, um, in that world? Well, I, I would say definitely biggest, maybe first inspiration uh, was um, Vince Clark okay. uh, from like Depeche Mode and Erasure. Oh, wow. First, yeah. like, way back, you know, way Amazing. back in the day. Yeah. That was the first, the first record I ever remember listening to was Upstairs at Eric's uh, by Yaz, which was Vince Clark and Allison Moyer. Yeah. And um, that was just like so inspirational. The, the, that's why you love the synth stuff, obviously. Yeah, all the 80s synths, yeah. the wobbly stuff, the so little kind cool. of off time. Right. Um, you know, I mean, he would literally use use tape back in the day and, and, and play To get those in. effects and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, that and then, uh, you know, who, who else? I, well, well, Vanga Boys was a really big inspiration of yeah, mine. Uh, and still is, oddly enough. But, you know, I would listen to Vanga Boys like, I mean, that was that was... Yeah, probably one of the first forays into like club music, if you right. will, for me. Yeah. And so um, those guys, and then also like you know the Giorgio Marauders um, and that kind of stuff. But but nowadays, you know, I I uh, I still really do look up to 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 those kind of older '80s and '90s producers and, yeah. and DJs, and I kind of have this like uh, you know I want to take my sound and make it more modern, but also pay homage to kind of the, the, the sounds of those right. decades in a way. Yeah. Dope. Well, I really liked it. I liked what I heard. I listened to the whole, the band, the new thing on band camp and then all, whatever else I could find. Thanks man. Um, yeah. yeah, really good. And, um, and then your other project is driver four Oh five, which you, you know, you're good at pulling off a theme. I think, you know, I mean, obviously yeah. you're a marketing person, so you, you're putting your, knowledge and talent into all of these projects but the music is super dope like i put on the i don't think you have that much music out yet as driver 405 right Only like, like 10 or 11 songs okay I think, for that i found yeah. a few things and really good like the sounds were good and the everything like the songs are really dope had them in the background it, it like sets a certain theme and then all your visuals for it and mm -hmm your show with the power glove and the Twitch streams and all the stuff. So people should check it out. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah, that one's, that one's a, an, an absolute blast for me. And, and that was definitely a passion project. You know, I mean, I've been DJing for, man, I think like 13, 14 years, but I've right. been producing for, for longer. Oh, know? wow. Um, and so I started making happy hardcore music a long, long time ago, back in 2005. Um, and, um, you know, I think that the the 80s sound is something that I really wanted to highlight and like show that, like, yeah. hey, look, this was like my first love is 80s synth pop. And yeah. so I have to kind of build this universe. And so right. I've kind of slowly built this universe around the the driver 405 like uh, lore. And so I've, I've, I'm like working on like a comic book right now. Oh, for amazing. It, and I'm what a good idea. On, uh, an album. I mean, I have like 40 songs for that project. Damn. Like kind of almost ready to go. Crazy. So, are you uh, doing all the production yourself? Or are you collaborating with anybody? Most of it's on my own. Yep. Okay. But I'm, I'm collaborating with a few people. Um, I work pretty regularly with a couple uh, friends of mine. Uh, uh, John Kunkel. Um, okay. he's, he's great. He, he goes by the, the new division. Okay. Um, and then I work with um, my friend uh, Colors as well. And, and right. I heard him great. on that. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the songs that I heard. Yeah. And then uh, I, I have a lot of like, you know. Uh, Is he doing vocals? Or are you doing the vocals on there? On on or one of the songs had someone singing oh. with some tripping. Yeah, some of them, some of the songs have him singing, and then some of them have me singing. Oh wow! So I, I sort I of mean, have more really good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I do sing on my own stuff. I, I kind of um 
have this sort of like phantom of the opera meets like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, inspired by Depeche Mode, like, like throw of my voice that I'll do. Okay. Uh, which nice. Is kind of like a I wasn't sure. I'm like, is this him? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And then I just throw a shit ton of reverb on it. And I'm like, All right, right. This is good. It was dope. Thanks. It sounds great. Thanks. Yeah. So cool. And driver 405, is that an ode to the freeway that's constantly, uh, in traffic, yes. <laughs> the 405 here in, in yes. LA where no one really drives. We just sit there inching along. Yeah. Because originally when I, when I made the project, um, it was kind of this like, uh, homage to like, Hey, uh, you know, follow, follow your dreams. You know, yeah. like the, the 405 is like, you know, I moved, I moved out to LA and right. pursued my creative, creative dreams. And, um, but also, uh, something that not a lot of people really like would know. And this was like a super like deep Easter egg was, yeah. um, in the movie drive, the main yeah. character's name was driver. Oh yeah. In the book. Okay. And, uh, he actually, so Ryan Gosling's apartment number was four or five. Oh, interesting. I, was, was I, I wonder if that's why probably for the highway. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So there's a lot of like that, that project, there's a lot of like really deep, deep things kind of going on and, and yeah. all the songs and all the stuff. And it's definitely more like, more of my like emo side than like yeah. the Roy LaCroix project, which is more just kind of like, Hey, yeah. let's, let's, let's get go up and have dance. Fun. Yeah. And, let's have know, fun. Yeah. And just like uh, good vibes. Mm -hmm. What are your like goals and sort of, um, you know, things that you're trying to do eventually with those projects, like individually or however you want to say it. Yeah. So, well with, with the uh, driver four or five project, it's definitely, um, coming out with a, with a, with a full album. Okay. Um, you know, I, I have this, uh, this concept of, uh, maybe creating a, a video game, uh, creating a comic book with that. Hell yeah. Um, and I've built the whole universe and the storyboard and everything. So that's all kind of like getting there. It's just yeah. finding the time to do oh, it. So cool. Right. Of um, course. And then, you know, with, with, with Roy, I mean that, that is kind of, um, you know, it's been such a fun project to work with other artists on because there's yeah. a lot of house producers that like, you know, in LA that I'm friends with and, and I've come up with some like pretty crazy collabs that, I mean, I would have never thought of myself. And so working with these really talented individuals, you know, yeah. um, Kyle Zuck, uh, James Ellington, um, you know, uh, uh, Serkia, I mean, a ton, a ton of people that, that have really like just generally like humble guys, you know, yeah. really cool dudes. And, uh, so I think just more, working with more like-minded, um, you know, house artists and yeah. you know, just kind of coming up with things that are even weirder than the standard tech house stuff that right. you might hear. Do you have any, uh, specific people you want to collab with like dream come true type stuff or people you look at, you know, in, in either genre or project? So driver four or five, since it's very like, uh, you know, eighties, like industrial, uh, probably for that project, Gasoffelstein would be really, really cool. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, one of the best, top, you know, yeah. like the, for the French, I mean, he, he walks out smoking a cigarette, doesn't say a word. Exactly. He's set, throws down leaves. Yeah. He's the epitome of doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Dude, he's, <laughs> he's like, he's like, but he gives a fuck about the insane production of his music, but right. comes out there like whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I'm just here to play music. <laughs> um, yeah, but he's great. And so incredible. He's one. And then probably, um, Man, there's 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 so many. Um, yeah, there's just so many. I mean, Vince Vince Clark, of course, would be fantastic. Yeah, um, would be. He would be put a, it out there, manifest. I'm manifesting this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm manifesting this. Um, yeah, I mean, just kind of whoever has a whoever has an open mind and, and yeah. wants to wants to work. So but, cool. But those those two definitely amazing. Um, well, um, I, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff. Is there anything else you want to touch on or promote or or talk about before we get out of here? Um, maybe something we forgot. I don't know from the pioneer stuff or, or your music. If not all good, you can just no, leave I us with some last words for the DJs out there. We covered uh, a lot, man. Yeah, we, we really covered did a lot. Yes. It's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been fun. It's a really good conversation. Yeah. Um, no, I just, thanks for having me on. Uh, for sure. it's been a blast. Uh, um, yeah, of course you, know, you, can, you can follow me on my, my handles. Uh, I'm sure we'll put like a link. Down below yeah, but, something. but no, let everybody know. Cause a lot of times people just listen, you know, the yeah, audio. Sure, so sure. my, well, my main Instagram, uh, account will be, uh, Roy LaCroix music. So, okay. uh, R O Y L A C R O I X music. Okay. Um, and that's the same handle for, that's like usually what I use for most of my stuff. Right. Um, and then driver four or five, um, 
or driver four or five music on, on a lot okay. of handles too. Um, Great. But yeah, no, just keep, keep an eye out for, for, uh, for, for stuff coming up with pioneer and check out, uh, uh, if anyone's in Atlantic city, we're going to be doing DJ expo. Are you um, going to be there? I won't be cause it's actually, okay. well, it's next week and, and no. I'm taking a lot of time off for my birthday. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. And Do I have that. friends coming in from out of town and stuff. So, right. Yeah. Um, I go to DJ expo. We have, uh, some cool performers. Um, nice. my, my friend Chewy is going to be playing and he's, He's fantastic. So he'll be oh, playing for, for us there. Yeah. I know. I'm going to be in New Jersey Sunday DJing at this spot. But then I saw, I was like, oh shit, the whole expo thing is that week, but I already have a flight back. I'm oh like, yeah. I don't know. It, and it's a lot to go all the way to Atlantic City and come back and I'll be in New York. But it I've is been, a lot. I've been once. I DJed a couple after parties and stuff like that. But uh, Well, we fly into Philadelphia. Right. When I would go. Way closer. Fly yeah. to Philadelphia and then we drive. So it is a process to get to Atlantic City. Yeah, from Philly, Philly it's like an hour. From New York City, it's like two and a half hours. Like a big, oh, yeah. big drive. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. That's amazing. Well, um, yeah. Any other, you know, words for the DJs listening out there, up and coming DJs or producers or, uh, you know, yeah, uh, man, just, um, you know, treat each other with respect out there. Yeah. You know, stay hydrated. Yes. Those are two good things, guys. Respect each other yeah. and drink your damn water or Gatorade. Your wa- and call your mom. You know? <laughs> call your mom. Yeah. Okay. Call her up. Yes. She wants to hear from you. Exactly. You know, people are making fun of her in the Call of Duty uh, lobby out there. So you got to protect her. <laughs> you got to protect her, man. All, all for all the moms out there. You know, yeah, you know, moms. They're just getting roasted in Call of Duty and Fortnite. Right. Lobby Don't do not stop. listen to that, moms. Don't I know. I had to, to mute that on my son's Fortnite thing. I'm like, his name is Joe Mama too in another thing. So I was like, oh, what are you guys really? doing in there? There's some new game called like Zuba. I guess it's like Fortnite, but it's like you can play it on an iPad. So. Oh. That's his thing I've noticed and his metaverse or whatever. He's like, you know, does FaceTime with his friends for the audio and they're all on there talking, but yeah. then they're in the Zuba world trying to get their characters and kill everybody. And that sounds fun. It's, it sounds fun. It looks fun. It's yeah. like Fortnite, but it's like maybe, a, I don't know about a bootleg version, but like a different kind of version or something. Oh man. Yeah. I, I've been playing, uh, I've been very deep into some video games lately. Like what? What's your main uh, thing? Well, Subnautica. I've been playing Subnautica. Okay. Um, I just, re- this is so funny. I just recently got into the Pokemon uh, card game for some reason. I'm playing that um, online we now. Have, I have every I card know. because of my son, but I've never played the actual game. I don't even know how you do it. It's crazy. I mean, <laughs> I've been watching strategy and stuff. And Wow. Yes. Yeah, so I'll go I'll go through these like rabbit holes of just like learning something and then just doing something else. Yeah. And learning something and just being like, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. Yeah. And do you stream at all on Twitch or YouTube anymore? Or you mm-hmm. just kind of handle the Pioneer stuff now? I used to stream on Twitch. Um, Pioneer, we've slowly... Uh, we don't stream as much anymore. It, it was, it was right. definitely like really fun and, and there was a lot of really good engagement. Yeah. But we're focusing on other things now that live events are back. Right. We're focusing on other things now, but, um, and then, and TikTok as well. But, uh, yeah, yeah, myself, I haven't really been streaming a whole lot. Um, I kind of, I kind of just been focusing on music production. I've right. got some new tracks coming out here. Uh, uh, in, in, well, I've got a track coming out in September, actually. Nice. Uh, that I'm really, really excited about. So cool. keep an eye out for that one. Um, but I'll post them up on Beat Source and Beatport. And uh, yeah, yeah. everybody support him, Roy LaCroix. Yeah, all my stuff's on Beatport. Um, okay, dope. You know, I, I honestly, I use Beatport like all the time for all my tracks. So su- subtle plug. Yeah, you know, I, totally. I do, I do love Beatport. Amazing. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you for coming through. And um, eventually I'll be on your show. And yes, uh, yes. We'll, we'll do the, the, the show swap. And dude, you're, <laughs> you're going to throw down, man. It's going to throw be, down. It's gonna be a bonanza. Of, of yes. Like, I'll be DJing on there. I was coming up with different things. And now I've learned so much even today on this show that I'm going to go home and practice yeah. and uh, be able to incorporate all this crazy. You said it's, it's S7 and 3000s, right? Yeah, so I'll be using doing? the S7 and the 3000s. So now you already told me so much crazy stuff. I'm like, okay, I got to try all this, you know. Yeah. Extra things. Yeah. There's, there's some really, really cool stuff. I mean, you can go, you can go super deep on that S7 with a loop MIDI and all right. sorts of really, like, Oh my God. Drew features. showed me so much crazy stuff with the loop MIDI. It took me like, I had to learn it and then go to sleep and then wake up for my brain to even comprehend it. I think, cause it was like too confusing. And then I got it. I was yeah. like, Oh, doing shit with the paddles and the different looping and the MIDI. And I was like, Oh, this is nuts. You know? Especially with, like, I tried to do a mashup of a song with, like, eight different beats, and I'm like, oh, I can use the MIDI to, like, flip through them or, you know, I was trying to learn, yeah, learn yeah. different things. It's it's a lot. I mean, uh, honestly, like, 
you know, and another, another tip for the DJs and producers out there is like, yo, with like some of these products, like just like read the manual, like right. as much as you don't want to. Right. That's how, like, I don't know. Right. 2% of the people in the world have read the, the manual, but Drew, Drew is one of them. I'm another one. Yes. <laughs> uh, you've got all of the, the people who are Ableton certified. They read their Ableton manual. Right. Um, but there's, that's, that's like so helpful for, for me to like really learn a product as I just read the manual and it's like. It, it's kind of fun for me. Yeah, I don't know. totally. It's no, like it dorky, is. And there's tiny fun. things that you learn that are just like next level, you know, that you're like, oh, I can use that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And like little little um, morsels of information that you can pull out, but also you can command yeah. F and search for specific things in the manual. And it's great. Oh, that's true. I mm -hmm. never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> command F. Command F. All right. That's our command final uh, tip of the day. Command F in the chat. Yeah. yeah command F, F in, F's in the chat. Yeah. F's in the chat, baby. All right. Yo, Brian Roth, Roy LaCroix, Driver 405, holy moly, all of it. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. All Appreciate right. It. Peace. All right. Thank you to Ryan Roth for coming on the show, a.k.a. Roy LaCroix, a.k.a. Driver 405, a.k.a. AAA, -A -A, all of it. He's, he's known as so many things, but uh, obviously he's a creative dope dude that does a lot of things and has so much more to come. He's turning 30 this week, so he's only up from here, guys. Um, but yeah, thank you to him for coming on the show. And uh, thank you to Pioneer for letting him come on the show. And uh, thank you to BeatSource for letting us do this show. Uh, and thank you guys for listening because that's who's making it happen. Uh, join us for next week for more interviews as we discuss what matters to DJs. My name is DJ Spider signing off. 